Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So, uh, right today, we are going to start out a very new topic, and that's Spy Test. So, the topic which we are going to go ahead today is the topic, is the name uh, is Spy Test into that. And so, for today, we are going to understand that what Spy Test actually is. Okay, so this is the uh, topic which we are going to cover up today. Okay. So let me first of all very quickly put up a sort of heading here for um, the topic which we are going to start up and it's spy test okay so that's the one okay py is basically for python and test okay. oh let me give you a very quick example first of all then i'll be proceeding on with the rest of the things so um let's say you are making up any application or you're making up any software okay now uh into that respective application or software you had put up the things and you want that before going into the market that respective thing shall be checked upon and if there are any bugs are found so that would be that shall be sorted before uh, moving into the market before introducing that respective application to the people you want that everything shall be very much sorted Right, so in that case, PyTest is one of those relevant framework or you call it as relevant tool which allows you to perform out the test upon based upon different different test cases and simply we try to figure out your respective whatever application software is made up by you. So this is the complete idea regarding the PyTest that what it's actually is. Okay. So um, hope I'm very much clear with this particular thing. So let me put up a very quick topic for today. Uh, I'm not taking the black color for now. So my today's topic is we are going to discuss up that what is uh, oh I'm so sorry. Let me write up in a clear handwriting. So here goes the pages and my topic for today is what is by test okay so this respective thing we are gonna discuss up today fine let me get down have up some space and then i could proceed on with the writing so let me very quickly take up a color here let's say this is one with the one and great so i would start writing and discussing about that what pi test actually is so pi test is pi test is a framework PyTest is a framework that PyTest is a framework that makes it easy that makes it easy to write to write comma test uh, comma and scale and scale to support and scale to support diff uh, sorry not that's different it's to support the complex to support out the complex testing complex testing for the applications for the applications so here goes the applications Okay, applications and let me complete out this respective sentence and it's the library. So here go the libraries. Um, great. So uh, what PyTest actually is, so it's a sort of a framework you could say. So that, that's a sort of framework uh, which makes it easy to write, which makes it easy to write, to test and scale to support complex testing for the applications and the libraries so pytest is sort of framework which makes it easy to write you could you could easily write up the test there you could easily write up your respective test and it it makes you easy to test up that uh, respective thing and scale to support complex testing for the applications and libraries fine moving forward with the pytest it is it is the it is the most popular it is the most one second let me get down very quickly so it is the most popular python package most popular python 
it's it is the most popular python package for testing so here goes the testing so yes it is one of the most popular python packages for testing so whenever you want to perform up that test so in that respective case it is the most popular python package right so hope i am very much clear with this particular thing right here that um what pyte is first of all is right moving forward the basis the basis for uh, the basis for uh, the basis for a rich ecosystem for a rich ecosystem of testing the basis for a rich ecosystem of testing is is plugins is plugins and extensions and extensions so uh like like when we talk about the testing so in that case the best case which goes is that that the basis for a rich ecosystem of testing is plugins and the extensions okay so first of all this is the complete thing regarding the pytest now next we have some more things to be mentioned up regarding the pytest only so here goes the way the way pytest is designed the way pytest is the way pytest is designed is as a is as a very extensible system very extensible system uh here goes the is a very extensible system comma easy to write plugins easy to write easy to write plugins and and there are and there are a lot and there are a lot of plugins and there are a lot of plugins present in the and there are a lot of plugins present in present in the pytest present in the pytest that are that are used for that are used for that are used for various purposes so here goes the purposes fine so the way in which the pytest is designed it is a very extensible system and yes it's absolutely uh easy to write plugin as well that, that i already did told you easy to write plugin and there are a lot of plugins present inside the pytest that are used for various purposes so for, for for the various purposes for the work of various purposes we already have a lot of plugins which you already have present up in the pytest so no worries for the for in the case for the uh, plugins as well so in pytest you did already have a pool of those respective things okay next next thing about the pytest right here we are having that testing is very testing is very important testing is very important before delivering the before delivering the code will before delivering the code in production in production fine so testing is very important before delivering the code in the production so when you are delivering up the code in the production so before it's really very important it's really very really important for you to uh, do that testing for that perspective uh, that perspective uh, whatever the software or whatever the application you are having up okay so yes uh, for pytest we have that it is one of the very best frameworks which is actually used up for doing up the testing okay so uh, python right here we are having in the pytest so yes it it makes easy to write up the programs there as well so let's understand and take out a quick uh, recap about the pytest at what it actually is so it is a framework that makes it easy to write test 
and scale to support complex testing, testing for the applications and for the libraries. Next, one second, let me take the cursor in hand. Great. Uh, it is the most popular Python package for testing. Great. So the basis for a rich ecosystem of testing is plugins and extensions. So the way the PyTest is designed is as a very extensible system, easy to write plugins, and there are a lot of plugins present in the PyTest uh, that are used for various purposes. So testing is very important before delivering the code in the production. So before the code is being delivered in the production, testing is very much important. Right, so hope I just uh, I hope I just did make this very much clear to you regarding the PyTest that what PyTest actually is and yes, what it's completely useful. Now further, we have many things more to be uh, to be seen and to be studied about the PyTest. So that I'll be putting up in the further videos. Right, so this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So, we discussed about that what PyTest actually is, right? We had seen in our detail regarding the PyTest. So, now it's the turn for dealing with the other things now. So, now let's start and learn about that what are the features of the PyTest. Okay? So, for that I had to put up a heading. So, let me quickly put up the heading for today. And first of all, we are going to discuss about the features, right? So here goes the heading which is features of PyTest. Okay, so that same thing which uh, that same thing we are gonna discuss it up right here. Let me start with the point number one. So the features of the very first feature of the PyTest is that it does not require so it does not require it does not require API to use. It does not require API to use. So this is the very first feature of the PyTest that it does not require uh, the API to use. Okay, great. Moving towards the second point, the point number two is that it can be used. Point number two is that it can be, it can be used to, it can be used to run doc tests doc tests and and unit and unit tests okay so second one is that it can be used to run doc test and the unit test so this is the point number two uh, in regards of the features of pytest moving towards the point number three point number three is that gives gives useful failure gives useful failure information gives useful failure information let me get down one second it gives a useful failure information without without use of without use of debuggers b u double g e r s Fine, so it gives up the useful failure information without, okay, here I won't be coming. So, without the use of the debuggers, the point number and the feature number three. Moving towards the fourth number, we are having that it can be written, it can be written as a function, it can be written as a function or, or, method okay so yes point number four goes that it can be written as a function or a method and point number five is that it has it has useful uh, plugins okay so point number five is that it has useful plugins so these are the five features which we have up here for the PyTest. let me take you towards them once again so the very first feature is that it does not require up the API to be used. Okay. So there is no such need for using up the API here for using up the PyTest. Second is that it can be used to run up the doc test and the unit test. So doc test is one type of test and the unit test is another. 
So both sort of tests can be run using the PI test. Third is that it gives you the useful failure information without use of the debuggers. So without any use of the debuggers, it gives you out the complete failure information. That's why your test is actually failing up. Okay. Next, it can be written as a function or a method. So uh, PyTest can either be written as a function or a method. And point number five that it has very useful plugins. So these were the five features of the PyTest which I did told you right here. Let, next, we'll move towards the advantages of PyTest. So here goes advantages of PyTest. Okay, now let's understand and let's learn about the advantages of the PyTest. That what are those advantages for the PyTest? Okay. So the point number one is that it is open source. So it is open source so the point number one the first advantage for the pytest is that it is open source right so open source means that it, it's easily available onto the website it's easily available onto the google you could simply go ahead and download that out it's completely free it's not gonna ask you about some money in that case okay so hope you got out the idea about the open source so it is open source next is that it can it can it can skip test it can skip tests and automatically and automatically one second and automatically detect and automatically detect the test so it can skip up the test and even it can automatically detect up the test right so skipping of the test and automatically detecting of the test both of the things can be actually done by the pi test fine next year is that tests are run parallel now here means that the test can as well be run in the parallel manner so this could actually run up here into the parallel way. It means that at one time two tests can also be run this out in the parallel manner. So yes, it allows running of the test in the parallel manner as well. Okay. Next, moving towards the point number four, we have that specific test. A specific test and subsets and subsets of specific tests and subsets of tests can be can be run can be run from the can be run from the program so here goes the program fine so the specific test and the subsets of the test can be run from the program so what are the program you have written out so from there you could run up the specific test or you could even run up the subset of the test. So both of these things are allowed into the PI test. Fine. Moving towards the point number five. So point number five here is that it is um, it is easy to start. It is easy to it is easy to start as as it has as it has a very as it has a very easy syntax very easy syntax so it is easy to start like like pytest is very much easy easy to start why because the reason is that the syntax which you have up in the pytest now that's very easy okay so that's the reason that it is easy to start with the pytest so right here we discussed about the advantages and the features of the PyTest. Let's go ahead once again and revise all of those respective things right here. Fine. So first of all, the feature for the PyTest is that it does not require of any of the APIs to use. Right. Next is that it can be used to run up the doc test and even the unit test. So any of the tests can be run up using the PyTest. Third is that it gives up the useful failure information without the use of the 
debugger. So without the debuggers, you could even give you the very useful failure information, right? Next is that it can be written as a function or a method. So you could write them as a function or as a method and it has a useful plugins. So these were the features. Now if I move towards the advantages of PyTest, the first it is the open source, right? Second one is that it can skip up the test and automatically detect up the test. So yes, the test can be skipped and automatically the test could be actually detected. Fine. Uh, next is that you could run up the test right here into the parallel form as well that uh, at one time you could run parallel test here. A specific test and subsets of test can be run from the program. So you could run up the specific test or the subsets of test from the program. And next is that it is easy to start as it has a very easy syntax. Syntax is very easy. That is why it is very much easier as well to start with the pipe test right so hope i am very much clear with all of these features and advantages which i did mention up here for the pi test right so hope i'm very much clear with this thing so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so now we'll be discussing about the, the different types of testing which we have up here in the pi test right we'll be discussing about all of those let me quickly take up a new color here and here goes my pen okay so here it goes that different here is my topic for today that's different types of testing okay let's discuss about that uh, in detail that what we have the different types of testing and what are they actually about Fine, so I'll be taking up a new color here very much quickly and um, let's take this one right here. So here we have the three types of testing. So I would write that there are, there are three types of, there are three types of testing. Okay, I'll be talking with them about. So the number one here we are having up the unit test. Okay. The very first one we are having up here as a unit test, okay? Second one, the second type of test which we are having up here is NOSE, N-O-S-E, fine? And third one here we have up here is the PI test that we actually already did, heard, did heard about. So, these are the three types of testing which we have up here onto this respective thing. There, these are the three types of type, uh, I would say testing, okay? Now, I would let you know about these three in a very short and after that we'll be going through in detail about all of these respective testing libraries. Okay, this testing, uh, okay. So the very first one we'll be dealing with is the unit test. Okay, now if I talk about the unit test, so I could write that it is, it is the testing framework. It is the testing, it is the testing framework that is it is a testing framework that is built that is built in the that is built in the standard that is built in the standard library that is built up in the standard library so this is one of the testing frameworks that is built up in the standard library so that is the unit test now again i'm repeating i'm telling you in a very short after that i'm going to take up all of these in the details fine Next, we are having up for this. For that was NOSC NOS, right? That is another testing. So that is, it extends, it extends the, it extends the unit test. It extends the unit, uh, unit test. It extends up the unit test to make, to, it extends the unit test to make testing, to make testing easy. Okay, to make up the testing easy. So, it extends the unit test to make the testing easy. Fine, that is about the second one, that is the nose testing, right? Third one, we have it for the pi test, that you are already aware of. Let me write it. So, it is the, it is the framework, it is the framework that makes, 
it is the framework that makes let me get down very quickly here so it is the framework that makes it easy so that makes it easy to write that makes it easy to write the test cases test cases in in python so it is a framework that makes it easy to write the test cases into the python so this is what is about the pytest great so first of all hope you are very much clear with all of these three parts which i just mentioned up here right here uh, in regards to the uh, all of the three testing now let me take up a first topic here for the discussion and that so is the unit test okay let me quickly write that out here and now let's discuss about the unit test in a little bit of detail fine so now uh it's the way i would just write it out start writing out here the a unit test a unit test is a a unit test is a way of testing is a way of a unit test is a way of testing uh i would say way of testing unit okay unit which is the smallest piece which is the smallest the smallest piece uh, the smallest piece of code the smallest piece of code that can be that can be logically or uh, that can be logically um isolated in a system isolated in a uh, system first of all this is what is about the unit is that it is a way of testing unit uh, the smallest piece of code that can be logically isolated in a system okay uh, in a system in in most programming in most programming one second let me just very quickly get down in most programming languages in most programming languages comma that is in most programming language that is a function that is a in most programming languages that is a function comma uh you say it as a you say it as a function or you say it as a method uh you call it as a a method or actually you could even a uh, one second or you could as well call that instead of function and method you could as well call that as a property or a method and and a property so here goes the same fine let me very quickly get up so what is a unit test so a unit test is a way of testing the unit it is a way of testing the unit the smallest piece of code this what is unit are that's a very smallest piece of code that can be logically isolated in a system okay it is a smallest piece of code which can be logically isolated in a system in most of the programming languages okay so here you say that as a function or a method or a property so in that case it is the thing which actually works out right here fine so hope i am clear with that particular thing to you to very uh, in a very detail right next next was that the isolated the isolated part the isolated part of the the isolated part of the definition of the definition is important the isolated part of the definition in, is important and in that case uh, right this is what uh, it actually uh, like unit test actually is let me just get over very quickly right here so uh, it is a way of testing the units so a small piece of code that can be logically isolated up in a system and in most programming languages that is a function a method and a property right now here we we did have the three types of testing so the first type of testing was a unit test so that was a testing framework that is one second so um, right here unit test was one of the testing frameworks and that is built in the standard 
library, right? So that is built up in the starter, standard library. That's a sort of a testing framework. Now, if I talk about the second one, that is NOS, uh, about that respective framework, that testing. So it extends the unit test to make testing easy. So this is what was the use of that NOS, right? And third, we are having up here the PyTest. So that's a framework which makes easy, which makes it easy to write the test uh, cases in Python. So to write up a test case in Python, it makes it easier, right? So that is what right here we are having up, right? Now, if I talk about the unit test in the details, so I could say that it is a way of the testing. It is way, it is a way of testing the units. The what are the units that are the very smallest piece of the code which can be actually logically isolated in a system, right? So in most of the programming languages, that is a function, a method, and a property. Right, so hope I am very much clear with this respective thing to you right here that what are the testing. Now, before moving ahead with any of the things, let me quickly give you a very quick recap regarding the rest of the things which we did study into the previous videos, right? So, first of all, we did study that what PyTest actually is. So, we studied that it's a framework which makes it easy to write, test and scale to support up the complex testing for the applications and the libraries, right? It is the most popular Python package for testing. So the basis for a rich ecosystem of testing is plugins and extensions. So the way PyTest is defined, designed is a very extensible system, easy to write plugin. And there are a lot of plugins present in the PyTest that are used for various purposes. The testing is very important before delivering the code in production, right? What are the features of PyTest which we are having up? So the feature of PyTest is that it does not require up the API to use, right? Second, it can be used to run the doc test and even the unit test as well. Unit test, I did already told you that what's actually that part of thing. Next, it gives the useful failure information without the use of the debuggers. Next is can be written as a function or a method and the fifth one is that it has useful plugins. So these are the five features regarding the PyTest. Next we are having of the advantages. So the advantages of the PyTest is that first of all it is open source. Second it can skip up the test and automatically detect the test. Third is that test can run parallel. For this specific test and subsets of the test can be run from the program. And fifth is that it is easy to start as it has a very easy syntax. Right? So, hope I am very much clear with all of these respective things which I did mention up here. Regarding the PyTest, regarding the advantages, regarding the features and even regarding of the different types of testing. Right? So, unit tests we already did, did discuss at what that. Rest of the two will be discussing up further with some more new things in the PyTest. So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone. My name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. Um, previously, we did study about the types of testing and we did already see that out. Now, basically, it's the time for seeing that how we use up the PyTest in the Python. How actually we write up the Py, uh, write up the test and how we run that out and how we just use that out and each and everything regarding this sort of things. Right, so let me just quickly take up a very quick color and let me firstly define up the heading for today. And the heading for today which we are gonna discuss, discuss is that how to, how to use PyTest, how to use PyTest um, using Python, uh, Python like this. Okay, so how to use of the PyTest using Python. This is the respective topic for today. Now, the everything in the PyTest. So what I'll be doing is that first of all, right here I'll be explaining you that how we can write up the test into the PyTest. Further, in the further video, I'll be taking you to the further um, my IDE and they will be writing up the codes onto the practice. First of all, it's very much necessary for you to understand that what are the things that are taking up the place and how are those things actually acting and how are those respective things working, right? So it's very much important to go through those respective things. Now, let's start with the step number one for how to use up the 
PyTest using the Python, right? So first of all, you, you need to create a Python file, right? You need to create up a Python file into that. Now, um, right now I am not creating up any respective test file or the things like that, okay? So let's say you create up any of the Python file according to your choice, whatever you wish out, fine? Next is that you add up your uh, respective basic functions of Python which you want to add into that particular file. What are the functions you are having that you want to add up in that particular file? So yes, you could use all, the, all of those respective functions right into that particular file. Right, first of all, this is the thing which actually happens up. Then you write up your particular program of your choice for what you want to perform up the testing so that you quickly put up there inside that and further you do up the uh, testing and all those things so let me give you an example the very first one is that i would write it up here as well that create up a create up a python file with the name create up a python file with the uh, name whatever the name you want to put that you could put that according to your choice fine this step number one has been done out. Moving towards the step number two, we had that add the add the basic Python functions. Add the basic Python functions. Okay, so whatever the basic Python functions are there, add out those respective Python functions of your choice. Fine. Now Next, if I will be moving forward with that, so what I'll be doing is that I'll be writing up a very short program into that particular case. So def lets you make up a function. My function is fun1. Okay, my parameters are a and b. And I could simply write up to return up a plus b. This is what actually I simply could wanted to write up. So yeah, that's here. Next, again, I have def. And here goes my fun2. That's my function number 2. Again, here I have a and b. Let's say this time I want to multiply. So, one second. Instead of this a, I will be writing up here directly. Return a multiplication b. Okay. Now, getting down right here, we have the function number 3. So, it's def fun3. Again, here you have a comma b. And inside you have the return um a minus let's say that's a minus b so it's a subtraction b fine so these are all the things which you have up here the function one function two and the function three which were did, which actually were uh, used to describe a by you now moving forward we have that now let me explain that what's happening up here so into the above program which we have written the example which we have written with this what we have done the first function which you have written up here that's performing the addition of two numbers right second function which you did write out that's performing the multiplication of two numbers and the third function which you did write it's performing up the subtraction of the two numbers right so this is what's happening in all of these three functions right here correct now Second is that now if we just want to perform up the automate testing in this pipe test. Okay. Okay. Into that. So what you need to do is that you can't do out the testing in this simple way. It means whatever the file you did wrote up you into that respective file directly you can't do up the testing. Okay. What I mean to say you can't do out the testing. See. Uh, PyTest has its own format that if the files will be in this format, then only and only I will be uh, writing or I will be running up the test into that respective file. Okay, PyTest has some sort of things like that which are important to be mentioned. Up. So with that only, you have to rename your file according to that respective um, thing which we have appeared into the Py, into this respective PyTest and then moving further only, you could actually run your program then further you could actually use up your program and write that out um okay so this is the idea regarding this particular uh case okay. so let me just take you towards the downside right here so now next is that uh, what is the format the format is you could put up um asterisk underscore uh test okay asterisk underscore test dot py 
or you put up underscore or you put up test underscore asterisk dot py. These are the two formats in which you could name up your file and according to these only, uh, you could run up the, pipe, the test into your program. So, okay. Now, into that respective case, let's say asterisk means that you could put up any, any name. Let's say I wrote a underscore, if I wrote, wrote a underscore test dot py. So, yes, now this is one of the valid uh, format in which you could write up your respective test. This is how you could run up your file. And now let's say simply you write up, you simply wrote up one dot py. You can't run up your pytest file, you can't run, write up, you can write up your test actually, but pytest won't understand that this is the test file, so you can't run that out. So this is the one thing that has to be taken care of that, uh, first of all, the extension that is test, that shall surely be present into your uh, file name, either in the starting, or at the last, neither in the between as well, okay, not in the between, either starting or at the last, so this test shall be present up there, so this is first of all what is the need, fine, now, uh, when you just make up your test like that, when you make up your file into this respective case, after that moving forward, you could write up your relevant test into your uh, functions, and uh, sorry, you could write up your relative functions for your performance of the test. Now, when you are writing up the test, so in that case, you use up a function that's the A double S E R T, that's the assert function. Instead of return, you use up the assert. If you are putting up a condition, let's say, let's say I want to write up there, I want to write up that uh, A plus B is equal to 12. This is my, let's say, condition. Nee, right, so when I'm just writing up that condition, so in front, I shall write up assert, then I'll be writing A plus B is equal equal to 12. So in this case, this is how you put up the conditions when you are using up the pytest. You do not use out if and else and all sort of things. Okay. This is the way how you just put up the things right here and how you just actually use out those respective and those particular things. Right. So this is the idea regarding the pytest. First of all, let me just write up here that how do you use up the pytest using Python. So into that, first of all, you create up a Python file with the name. Now, name, I did already told you that what shall be the format. Format shall be asterisk underscore test dot py or test underscore asterisk dot py. Any of these would work actually. Fine. Second is that you add up the basic Python functions. Whatever the basic Python functions are there, you could add them out. So your function 1, function 2 and function 3 are written up like this. So I did add. Next, I just told you that for writing up the uh, file, whenever you want to write up the test and onto that, for that you are making up a file. So, always make sure that you are writing up that file in a sort of asterisk underscore test.py or test underscore asterisk.py. So, your file name shall contain test either in the starting or at the last, but not in the middle. Okay. So, in that respective case, you are actually allowed to run up your test and you could verify and like uh, go ahead with uh, if you have any failures in your test. So, you could again check that and um, like make sure that you do not have any is uh, like error or something into your program. Right. So, this is the method how you just use up all of these things, how you use up the Python for writing up the Python. Right. Now, sorry, in Python. Now I'll be taking you on to the IDE further and there we'll be discussing about the correct and the practical implementation of the test using the PyTest. Right, so I'll be stopping up here for this video. So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Sham Devi. Hope you all are doing well. So into the previous video, we looked upon that um, how we could actually make up the test file. And other than that, we also looked upon that um, how are the tests written inside that, right? So, into today's particular video, we are going to do out the practical for these two things, okay? So, the ID that I am going to use up here is the PyCharm ID. Okay, now, one second, I'm so sorry. Uh, so, I really do not have any of the uh, cases in that that uh, this ID is compulsory or that. So, in that, no issues like that. Simply the IDE which you are used, which you actually use and you have the good hands on onto that respective ID, you could use that out. Okay. So great going here. So now these are different different projects which I'm having. Uh, what I would do, I would make up a, 
from right under this let me put up like this and let me do up the right click on here uh, let me do the right click okay now into that right click uh, here we'll be getting up some options now uh, generally what we do we make up a directory and inside that respective directory we make out our test files okay now that, that's the correct method which we use out so for making the directory and storing up the files that i would not be covering up here because i'm going to let you know a very simple method for writing up the test okay a very basic implementation so onto that i'm simply making up a python file now the name convention i did already told you that um, it's compulsory for you to either give the name as asterisk underscore test or test underscore asterisk now these two are the uh like ways in which you could give up the name other than this nothing would be actually like used up here so i'm gonna give the house test underscore demo one my file name and hit out enter so my file python file has been made by made up for me right here under this particular func under this particular uh like i would say the file which is test underscore demo one dot p1 okay now that's uh good now forward what, what i need to do here is that i need to write up my respective code i need to write up my respective test for this particular file okay so now on to that what i need to go ahead with this i need to write up my files um into that particular case i am simply gonna make up a function for me dip okay and i would name up my function as test underscore one put up the brackets get done okay now right here uh whatever you want to do you could do but one condition would be that is assert assert will be used up okay assert is uh, i told you that it's a type of keyword which is used up in case of if and else that we have this right here in and that's used in the uh, whenever you're writing up your test so in that case it is used so i could write up assert two multiplication six is equal to 12 and double equal to fine this is one of my conditions which i had put up now in that case what was the first test i had test case i did put up if that is true so it will show that one test case uh for that it will show, show success and for whatever test cases it's wrong it will show the failure okay so that is how it's actually um gonna be fine next year goes next it's test underscore two okay put up the bracket like this one second um put up the bracket like this and put up the code and get down now here let's say i put up assert and that's um, 45 minus 12 is equal to 20 and that's double equal to right so let's say this is my second condition which i did put up here for this particular thing right now are uh, these are my two test cases let's say which i did put up now uh this is all all which i wanted to put up onto the suspected file so i made up my first function test one and there i simply put out my condition 2 in multiplied by 6 is equal equal to 12 and yeah we know that this condition is respective condition is absolutely true right into my second test case i wrote test underscore 2 as my function name and into that i did put up assert and into that i did put up 45 minus 12 is equal equal to 20. Now we know that the suspective one is wrong, right? What are the values which we had given actually here? These are completely wrong. So they won't work out here. Now I need to run this out. I need to run out this respective test case. So how do we do that into the pie chart? So in the pie chart downside in just between, you have an option that's terminal. Okay, click on that respective terminal, right? now into this terminal you have a file in which you have actually like done and saved up your file okay so for now it's here python project okay and uh, actually let me do out one simple thing let me take this to one second let me take this to above control and let me make up a new file here uh, into the same folder in which i i am having up the access for this so i'll be making up here the test underscore demo one right and whatever i did i uh, cancel and whatever i did have out to here control a and control c i'm gonna paste that up right here onto this particular file now it's very good to go from my side so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna write up the command which will help me to run out the suspective test file 
So you need to write up your pie test. And when you are giving, uh, and here you simply need to write up test underscore demo one. Okay, test underscore demo one. This is what is actually required you. Okay, I did hit enter, but uh, in that case, right now, let's see that what's going to happen. I guess I just missed up one simple thing. So, let's see that what is, yeah, it, it will show that no directory found up of this respective name because, yeah, that's completely true. Uh, I told I just missed up one simple thing. So, I need to write up here the pie test and after that, I need to write up dash v, okay. Then you write up your file name, which is test underscore demo one. It's dot py right now. This is how it's actually gonna be, and yes, now it's run. Uh, let me show you that how everything is looking up here. So, see, first of all, the command was you to write up pytest. Now, why did I use up this dash v? So, this dash v is used whenever you are having up a test case. Sorry, whenever you are having a file and you want one single file only to be done up, to be done up, okay. So, in that case, you use up this dash v. And in front of that, you put up your file name. So, for me, it's test underscore demo one dot py. Do not forget to put up this extension that is dot py also. So, see what it showed? It showed me that it collected two items. So, it means that in this uh, file of mine that was test underscore demo one dot py, we were having in total two items. So, the test underscore one is passed. So, test underscore one function is passed. And test underscore two is failed here. Okay. Now let's check about the failures. It will show you about the failures. So test underscore two has been failed. So into that you wrote up that 45 minus 12 is equal equal to 20. So you were writing that 33 is equal equal to 20. But this is completely false. Now whenever you have written up a condition and that perspective is wrong. So it's going to give you out the assertion error. Okay. You do you do use of the assert function. Right. So whenever it's going to give you the, whenever your test case is not passed, means whenever your test case is failed. So in that case, it's going to give you the assertion error. Okay. And that mention that, that mention that, that mention that the test failed was in the file, which is test underscore one, demo one dot py. This was the file in which the test case failed. The name of the test case was test underscore two. Fine. And the test was that is 33 equal equal to 20. So at last it is showing that one is being failed and one is being passed. Okay, this is how it's actually showing up. Now I would do up one simple thing here and I would make this as correct. Let me put it as correct. 20 is equal equal to 20. Okay, again I would go on to my terminal and run up the command. So that's pytest dash v and it's, it's test underscore demo one dot p1 and hit out enter. Now how about a look at what it gave me. It again collected up two items from there and it showed me that test underscore one is passed and test underscore two is as well passed. So you have two passed test cases right here into your particular file into which you have written out. So both of the test cases have been passed. And now let's say I make up both of them as wrong. Okay, and this is 21. So now you could as well have a look at what's going to happen up. Again, I write up my command that let me check it out. Yeah, it's pytest dash v and further we are having up the file name that's test underscore demo one dot p1 and it okay d i wrote up wrong i'm so sorry for that i need to again write it out pytest dash v and it's test and this test underscore demo one dot p1 and hit out enter now have a look and see what it showed us, showed us as output. So one second, let me go above. Right, so it again collected two items and both of those were failed. This one is as well failed and this test underscore two is as well failed. So for the test one, what was the condition? It was 12 is equal equal to 20. So no, it's not the same. So it gave me the failure of that case. And here we are getting up the assertion error. For the down one as well, we have 20 is equal equal to 21. So yes, this is as well false. It's not correct. So again, I get up the assertion error, right? And a short summary. In for that, both of these test cases have been failed, which is test one and test two, and which were in your file, which is test underscore demo one dot p one. Two failed cases, right? So I would just now close this out right here. Fine. So I hope that you got up a very clear idea that how we write up a very basic test and how we just run out that perspective test what's the command okay now 
further we are having many more things to go ahead so let's i'll be covering them in the further videos right this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhi we hope you all are doing well so in the last video we did see that how you could write up a test and how you could run that out now into this one we are going to see that let's say you are having up the multiple test multiple test files you are having up and you want to run them all of them at one single time so how you could do that right so that thing we are going to see so let me do a one simple thing very quickly let me make up a new test file as well once again so here goes the new here goes my python file again i would repeat it up that whenever you are writing up your test file name make sure that either you are writing up the test in the starting or you are writing up the test in the ending because if test is not written in the starting or ending it is gonna not run out your test file okay so now why because uh, wherever it finds up written as test it automatically treats them as a test file okay so that's the complete idea so fine here the test demo one is written that i would be keeping the same only which we did written right up the last time for now i could make up a new file new one okay so here goes my div and uh, now i have a uh, test underscore a okay put up the brackets the colon get down here goes the assert function okay so assert is somewhat let's say assert 12 plus 12 is equal equal to 24 okay so this is my first function which i did made up moving towards the, okay assert added already told you that as we used to put up and use up if else conditions while in the normal python so here for the pytest we use up this assert function or this assert function as well lies under the python programming only okay it's not nothing any much uh, different uh, that i have taken from anything anywhere else okay it, it is not the cat that respective case simply the assert is also one of a type of a function which we have up here into the python programming language fine so hope i'm clear with that so this is very much sorted at this particular place next moving ahead uh, okay whenever your test case fails it means that whenever you are having the failure into your test case so it's gonna show you the assertion error fine so next is test underscore b okay putting up the code and getting down here goes my assert and now I'm going to write up 3 multiplication 3 is equal to 30. Uh, that's double equal to. Fine. My second test. Let's say I take write up one more here. So this is test underscore C. Put up the brackets. Go and get down. Here goes assert and simply write 45 is equal equal to 45. Okay. Now these three are my respective tests which I have written onto this particular file. Okay. Now what I would do, I would run this out. So first of all, let's say I would be running only the simple, simple file. So for that, I could write a pytest dash v. And what's my file name? My file name is test underscore demo two dot py. And hit out enter. So okay, it showed me that one is failed and the two are passed. Let's go above and check that out. So it collected in total three items. So yes, in my file, I was having in total three functions. So my file name was test underscore demo two dot py. The same for all the three. And my test A has been passed, test underscore A has been passed, test underscore B is failed, and test underscore C is again passed. So this is how it's the pass and the failed works. Next year we are having up the failures. Okay. Now my test failures which I'm having up here. So my first file which is being failed is the test underscore B. So onto that the condition which I did put that was assert 3 multiplication 3 is equal equal to 30. So absolutely that's wrong because 9 is not equal equal to 30. Right. So in that case I got up an error and that is my assertion error as well because I told you whenever it is not going to run it will show you up the assertion error. So yes it's showing you that out. And now here you have up the short test summary information that uh, the failed test case was uh, in the file which is test underscore demo 2 dot py in that test case was test underscore b and the case which you did draw wrote was 9 is equal equal to 30. Okay so this was first of all the idea. Next you were having that 1 is failed and 2 are passed. That's quite clear that then that's I, as well quite okay. Right. 
Now let me close this out. Let me go to here and if I could put up one simple one as row 12. Fine. Now I want to run up both of these tests at one single time. Okay, so what I would do? PyTest dash V. Hit out enter. Now into this respective case, what is going to happen up? That both of the test cases which you are having, both will run simultaneously. It means add together, both of them are going to run up. Let me take you above and show you. See what it does? It collected five items in total. So my test file, my demo file one was having two functions and demo two was having three functions. So, so three plus two in total, it's five. So it collected all of them at one single go. Right? So it collected five items. The first one was passed, second failed, third passed, fourth failed and the fifth passed. Now, here you could as well get up a confirmation that which test file is from which uh, file. So, this test underscore demo one dot py uh, into this respective file you have test underscore one function that is being passed. Again, in test underscore demo one dot py you have the function which is test underscore two and it is failed. Next, in test underscore demo two dot py you have test underscore a and it has been passed. Next in test number 2.py you have test b which has been failed and the test c is being passed. Let's go down and have a clear look over these. So the failures are test underscore 2, right? So test underscore 2 in that the condition was 20 is equal equal to 21. So absolutely that's false. So that's the reason it's giving me up here the assertion error. And this respective test was written onto the file which is test underscore demo 1. Okay. Moving down, I have the second test, which is my test underscore B. Now, into that, whatever that case, case which has been failed up here is 9 is equal equal to 30. So, now this is not at all true that 9 is not equal equal to 30. So, in that case, you are getting up here the assertion error because my respective test case have actually been failed. Right? Now, what I would do, I would get down. So, now here's a short summary info regarding these. So here we are getting that uh, for field it is test underscore demo one file. The function name is test underscore two. That has been failed. Next in the test underscore demo demo two dot py file test underscore b has been failed. And these are the uh, conditions which have been failed. That is twenty equal equal to twenty one and nine equal equal to thirty. So in total you have two passed and two failed and three passed. This is how it's showing up the summary. Now let me do a one simple thing. Let me make all of these as wrong. Let me write up all of these test cases are, are actually failed. 4 and this and this, right? Let's do that out. I would go onto the terminal and simply write up your pi test dash v and hit up enter. Now see what it is going to give you because I made up all of the test cases as false, right? I did make that out. So, here it is showing that the collected items are in total 5, right? So the demo 1 and demo 2, both the functions have been failed. And in demo 2, all the three functions have been failed, right? Getting down here, it is showing me up the failure. So in your test underscore 1 is your failure. So you are getting up the assertion error. Secondly, test underscore 2 is again a failure. So in that, you are again getting up the assertion error. Moving down, you have test underscore A. So, that's again a failure. So, it's giving you assertion error. Test underscore B as well and test underscore C as well. So, all of these five are giving you the assertion error because all of the things which you did mention up here, all of those are false. Right? All the conditions which you did put up, all the functions which you did made up, all of them have been failed. That's the reason it's giving you this type, this type of output. Now, here's a short summary that uh, which function lies in which file and that has been failed. So you got that out and here it's the final output that 5 failed in this much number of seconds. And now last one demonstration which I want to give you, I'll be making all of these as true. So it's 12, it's 20, 20 is equal, equal to 20 and 6 into 12, it's, it's 24, it's 9 right here and downside here we have the 45. Right now I would go on to the terminal. Write up the command once again, pi test, okay, uh, pi test dash v and hit up enter. So this time I did make up all of my conditions as true. So what it showed, it showed that collecting five items in total. So these are the five items. My test one and test two, 
from my test underscore demo one file and my test A, test B and test C from this test underscore demo two file. Right, and all of these five have been passed up here, right? And in total, you have five passed uh, test cases for your files. And yes, we did write up those only, right? So, hope I am very much clear with this particular thing as well that how do you write up these things and how do you run up multiple test files at one single go, right? So, hope I am very much clear with all of these respective things to you. So, uh, this is all for now and we'll be meeting up in the next video with some new, new stuff for the pie test. So, this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So, um, we did already study about uh, writing up the test, basically how to write up the test and how we execute up the files, right? We did see the method for executing the file uh, one by one or for executing up the complete files, right? So this is up till now whatever we had seen. Now uh, moving further ahead here, I just wanted to take a few more examples regarding uh, for writing up the test, okay? So into that particular case, I'm going to take up a new example right here. Now what if I just go up to this particular place and make up a new test file? So, hope you remember that for making up a new test file, we did already have a percentage and it's it's actually uh, to be, it is used to be followed up. Either uh, you write test asterisk or you write out asterisk test. Okay, no matters. So, you go to new and then go to python file and this one is going to be like test underscore it's demo 3. Okay, test underscore demo 3 and then hit out enter. Fine, so I'm going to cancel this out right at this particular place. Fine, so hope I am very much clear with this particular thing to you right here. Fine, uh, moving forward, I could write up and okay, one more thing. You could as well use out any respective library or as well you could use out any respective module for making up and writing up the test right here. Okay, both of the thing actually works up fine so what i could do here is that i could import up the relevant library but right now i do not wish to do out so i would simply make up a function that's div and um, in front of that i would make up the uh, make up one of the files which are actually my test function which i'll be making up here so um now if i talk about a test function so for that as well i did mention up that what's the rule for making up a test function Either you write test underscore or dash or whatever you just write out after test, right? So first name would be the test. So it goes test underscore fun one. Okay, my function name. Put up the colon get down. Here goes my assert function, right? So uh, like we, I, all, I did already told you in this particular case that whenever we are writing up a test, so into that respective test, what do we use? We use for putting up the conditions, the assert function, right? So that's a sort of function which is used up here in the uh, in the way when you we are using up test underscore fun one, fine. So here goes assert, and then moving forward with that, what I could put up here is that I could put up a condition. Let's say right here I want to put up a string, okay? So let's say I wrote up apple is equal equal to apple, right? So in the last time, what did I put? Last time I put up only and only the integers, right? In the, this respective example, I would as well put up some strings as well so that we could have a test that uh, does this works on the strings or not or things like that, okay? Um, so I'm very much clear with this particular thing. Moving down, I will be making up my second function. So that's def test underscore it's fun to putting up the bracket and the colon and coming down. Here goes my assert function. Okay. Let's see now this for the, this one. I'll be making that as false. So I would be writing up the uh, string. Let's say is uh, pen is equal equal to pencil. Okay, I wanted up this perspective to make it as false. So in the same way, I am writing up here pen is equal equal to pencil. Fine. Hope I am clear with that.
moving towards my third function. So here goes def test underscore. Here goes the fun three. Putting up the bracket. And here I could put up any integer as well. So assert I could write. Now in this way I could write that n is equal to 22. And I could write up that assert. Um, n percent 2 is equal equal to 0. Right, uh, you, uh, yeah, one more thing right here that you could put up some conditions like this sort of as well. That uh, you could put up a variable and onto that respective variable, you could put up some value. Okay, and after that using up the assert, you could apply up your relevant condition and then you could move forward with the rest of the things, whatever you wish out. Right, so hope I am clear with that. What I am going to do is that I am going to run this out right here. So run here goes this out, right? Um, okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't need to run it out. I need to go on to the terminal, right? And I need to write up a relevant file, so relevant uh, this name. So here goes that pytest. And after that, we have the pytest dash v. And then goes test underscore demo, demo three dot py, right? And hit out enter. So let's see that basically uh, how is it gonna get us give us a test result? Um, great. So moving above right here, what it showed to me, it showed to me that it has collected up in total three items. So yeah, I was having uh, three functions onto that particular file. So absolutely, it's fine that it collected up three items. Then uh, in the test underscore demo three file, the test underscore fun one is passed. Test underscore fun2 is failed and test underscore fun3 is as well passed out. Right. Now let's move about and check about the failures. So right here. Um, okay. So failures is your test underscore fun2. Right. That's your failure right here. So let me take you down. Right here failure you are having that out. So here the function was that assert. Uh, pen is equal equal to pencil, right? Assert yes, pen is equal equal to pencil. So in that respective case, it is showing that you got up the assertion error here for the test underscore fun two because that's not a uh, similar, right? So at last, it is showing me a short test summary info that this test has been failed and uh, like you were having up an assertion error in the test underscore fun two function, you were having up a uh, assertion error and that's assert pen is equal equal to pencil fine and one failed two passed okay so this is how actually you could put up the uh, I would say you could use up these uh, these things into the program into this particular pytest as well if I make this now similar like pen is equal equal to pen and now if I try to run this out Okay, I accidentally opened the Python console. It's the terminal. So here goes PyTest dash v, and then I am having my test file name. So it's test demo three dot py, and hit out the enter. So yeah, now see what it is showing. That it has collected up the three items uh, from the test demo three file. It collected up test fun one. And then it collected up test fun two, and then it collected up test fun three, right? And all of these three are actually passed here. So in total, three are passed. And if this was the time that is 0.16 seconds, that is the time which is taken for the execution and um, for the checking of all of these three particular uh, functions which we did define, right? So uh, here is the like this is how you write up the test actually into the pytest and yes uh, previously I did only show you for the integers that how does this works for integers and right here I just had also shown you regarding uh, that how it works for the strings as well so either integers or strings any of these cases work very correctly into the pytest for whatever the test you are putting this as well gives you the very clear output right so hope i am very much clear with this particular thing to you uh, regarding one more example for executing your test right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care
Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. Um, okay, so uh, we did learn that uh, how we could write up the test, right? How we could write the test using the, we can put up the strength in the conditions, we could put up the integers, right? Moving forward, we learned that how do we execute up the files, a single file and a multiple files as well. These are all our respective things that we had gone through, right? Now, let's say we have up a case here that, um, let's say you have a case that you want to run up all of those respective test files which are having up a word. Let's say my word is fun, F-U-N. Let me write that as well, one second. So right here I would take up a color and yeah that's okay. Let's say I will, I am having up a word that is fun. Okay. Now I want to run up though all of those respective files which contain up this particular word. Okay, which I want to run up those all of the files in each and every test file, uh every test case in each and every test file which is having up the word which is fun. Okay. Now, into that case, we have a different command that's used for doing so. Okay, we have a command right here. And that particular command is only used whenever you want to do some or the other thing like that. So, into that particular case, uh, it's completely used out. Fine. Now, uh, first of all, let me tell you that what's that command. And after that, I'm going to tell you one very interesting fact regarding uh, the same which I am talking about right here. Fine, so let me go to the downside right here. And my command, which I have is, it's pytest, okay? It's pytest and here goes dash k, okay? Now you put up the angular brackets and in the angular brackets, you put up your substring, okay? You put up your substring into these angular brackets and in front of that, you write out dash p. So, now that's the syntax, that's the command which we use up uh, for executing a name which is existing in all of the test files. Okay, great. So, here goes now pytest dash k in the bracket you have the substring and then you have the dash v. Fine, so substring is basically the string for which you want to check up all of your test files. That's actually called your substring. Okay, so now that's a very fair idea. And that's a very clear idea. So let's see my term which I wanted to search upon is fun. So I would write up here pytest, pytest dash k. Into the bracket, I'm going to write up here as the fun. Okay, and I'm going to write up here dash v. So this is how it's actually going to be. And this is how you are going to put up the command. Okay, now right here while writing only, I would be giving you a very short example for this particular case. Uh, let's see, I am having up a test, test file 1.py. This is my one file, okay? Into that, I have sub command which is written, let's say dev, and that's test underscore fun1, okay? You put up the bracket, and uh, let's say you put up a condition that it's assert 11 is equal, equal to 11. Fine. Let's say you put up one more, uh, one more test case right here so that's let's say test def test underscore one put it like this right here again you put up a sort function and write up 12 is equal equal to 24 okay and one more case you put up you got down here and if i wrote up here def and now let's say my next function name is test underscore function test underscore function Okay, and I put up the bracket like this and into that downside, I wrote up assert and uh, condition goes are 3 into 2 is equal equal to 6. Fine. These three are the things which I am having up into my test. Fine. These three are my respective tests which I am having up here. Now, let's say I make up my second test file. My mm, second test file. So... One second, let me check out the name. So that's test underscore file one. So downside it will be one second. Uh, it will be test underscore uh, file two dot py. Okay, my next file, which I want to write it about right here. Test underscore file two dot py. Fine. 
Now into this respective file again I start writing up some of my test cases. Let's say def it's def fun to rate. Okay, where did I miss up that test? One second. So I would just write yeah. Here goes uh, here goes the def and then I am having test underscore fun to put up the brackets the colon and downside I put up my assert. And in front of that, I put up my condition. Let's say my condition is uh, A is equal equal to B. Uh, not like this. One second. A is equal equal to B. Like this. Okay. Now, here going to downside, my second condition is div. And here goes, let's say, uh, div test underscore uh, 1 fun. Okay. And the brackets and here again goes my assert and my condition and my condition would be let's say um, not the not the inverted commas it would simply it would simply be 4 is equal equal to 4 fine now if I write up the above command this command which I did wrote up here if I write that out okay so what it is gonna do from here what it is gonna actually uh, do is here is that it will take all of the functions which have this word which is fun inscribed in it right now it doesn't matter that it has one as well or the text if fun is mentioned then it will treat that as a function as a substring which has to be taken care of fine in the test underscore fun when we were having fun so that this will be included okay now if i talk about this respective test so test underscore one now into this one is not included so it will not take up this one Moving downside into this respective function now. This is test underscore function. But you have as well the word which is fun right here. Right in the starting you have fun. So what it is going to do. It is going to take up that particular as well. Okay. It will take that as well. Moving to my second file. It will check on uh, check on for all of the files. Okay. Moving to my second file. Here I have fun. So again it is going to take that out fun. And it is going to consider up this particular function. This particular test. And for this as well, it's going to consider up my respective function. Okay. One and uh, one fun. Fine. So now what I'm going to do is that is let me quickly take up a very quick color from here. And I have something very important to mention about this particular page. So from both of these respective files, this test will be included. And then this respective test will as well be included. From my second file. Both of the tests will be included. So in total, I'll be having four tests. Okay, in total, I'll be having four tests that will have of the keyword that will have the substring which is fun into them. So it's going to collect up all of those four and then uh, according to the needs, it's going to give up the respective result. Either your test case has been failed or your test case has been passed or whatsoever you are having of. Okay, so hope I'm first of all very much clear with these particular things to you. That what are the things it's going to take and how it's actually going to respond up here. And how do you execute out this particular query, okay. So, uh, when I wrote up here the substring, so that substring is actually your string for which you want to uh, search for the test name. So, a string, a string for, a string for which you want to string for which you want to uh, search for test name okay so what the whatever test you want to search about that sub string is the respective string right so hope i am very much clear at this particular place regarding the the sub string that how do you execute up any of the test case when you are having up a sub string and how does that actually completely works up right here fine so hope you got a very clear idea into this particular case so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shampi we hope you all are doing well so right into the previous video we saw that um how you could execute up the test using the sub string right let's say you are having up a respective string and uh, what you want is that, that from that particular string, whatever the things you get and whatever the are your, let's say, whatever the uh, test functions you are having. 
So from those test functions, you get up your respective uh, test cases to be uh, run, right? In that case, the substring is one of the thing which you use out. So now let's see out a very quick demo, a practical demo for the substring things, right? So what I'm gonna do is that, uh, we already have about three test files for the examples which I did already show, showed you before. So I'm gonna make up some changes into those test files only, okay? I would not make some new one for the things like that. Um, I'm gonna comment uh, the test which we are having up here, okay? I did comment it up. So now here goes div and it's test underscore fun one, okay? And putting up the colon, getting down here, let's put up your my assert function, assert apple. Um, okay, let that not be apple for now. Let's put up some numerical things for now. So, uh, 4 multiplication 8 is equal equal to, uh, letter 24, I put it out. Okay, that's wrong, I know, but I wanted to make up my test rate run here as false, okay. Moving down, I have my second uh, test case, uh, test which has to be put up, that's def. And I could write up here test underscore, and I'm going to put up here the function. Okay, put up the colon, getting down right here. And I did put up my particular condition for this place. So it's again right here. My condition is assert. And that's 90 is equal equal to 21. Okay, that, that's going to be wrong. Again, uh, moving down div. And here I am going to put up test underscore 1. Okay, put up the colon getting down. Here goes assert is equal, sorry, assert 3 equal equal to 3. Fine. So I made up two of my uh, test cases wrong here and one of my correct. So two test cases which are wrong is test underscore fun one and test underscore function. These two are wrong here and the test underscore one is my correct one. Okay. Now here goes my test demo two. Fine. So into that I'm going to select and do control. Now here from this what I could do, I would write up again some of my functions at this particular place. So my test cases are you could say so dev and it's test underscore one second test underscore let's say it's fun too okay and right now i'm gonna make that as correct so here goes assert and i'm gonna write up 45 is equal equal to 45 okay moving down again i have dev that's test underscore this time i'm gonna put it as function two okay and again i'm going to put up the colon and here goes my assert is equal equal to this time i'm going to put up here orange one second i'm going to write up somewhat like this that pink is equal equal to orange fine so yeah one condition has been put it up here that's gonna be wrong i know then here goes let's say dev um okay dev and it's still underscore demo link okay colon and uh, like this get down here goes my assert and my condition is like the 78 is equal to 90. fine so the three conditions are again three of my test cases have been mentioned up to you three have been mentioned up in this file and for this as well i'm going to put up some things so like this and it goes like dev right now i am having fun three let's say but it's test fun three right putting up the brackets colon getting down so here goes my assert function and what's that function about it's about let's say um 12 minus 10 is equal equal to 2 okay next going down one second uh going down here i have div again and that's the test and is or fun 4 okay putting up the brackets right here colon getting down and here i am having assert and it's let's say uh, Python is equal equal to um, okay it has to be inside the double inverted commas so yeah double inverted quotations is equal to and just I'm gonna write up the reverse for Python okay n o h t y p okay so I wrote up the reverse for Python so if this is equal equal to this and here goes dev uh, let's say it's test underscore demo two putting up the brackets getting down here and it's like that assert 
and I have uh, I have uh, zero is equal equal to zero. Fine. So on to all of these three test demo files, I made all the three tests. I, I wrote up three tests in each of the test files, right? Let me go on to the terminal very quickly right here. And let, now let's put up the command. So I need to write up the pytest, right? Let me zoom in. Pytest. Then goes the dash key, right? Here goes my angular brackets. Inside my angular bracket, I really need to put up that for what I want to search, I want to search it for fun. Okay, and here goes dash V and hit out the enter. Okay, so fun. Okay, it's one second. Let me check that out. So the command which we used up was oh, pytest dash k fun uh, dash v. Okay, string for you for which we want to search of the file name. Okay, pytest dash k uh, fun dash v. Okay, let me just quickly go ahead here. Okay, demo 1 is done, demo 2 is done, demo 3 is done. Um, okay, again, I'm going to open up the terminal. So, it's opening a Python project. Which, correct. So, it's pytest. Okay, pytest. Uh, then, here goes my dash k. Okay, uh, let's have put a fun one. Okay, and here goes dash v and hit add enter. The system cannot find the file specified. Um, okay, so... What we could do here is that I could use up the uh, other method right here, and with that respective method, we could actually find up that what are we getting up here, okay? Uh, but actually, why is it not doing because I was missing up one single thing here, and uh, let me tell you what I did wrong here. I need to write up here pytest dash k, but I did not need to put up the angular brackets, okay? That's for the reason here goes fun and it goes dash v. Fine, so that wasn't required, which I was doing again and again, and that was putting up the angular brackets. Fine, so do not put up the angular brackets there. So there were total nine items in, in this, three were not selected, and six items were selected. So from that six items, four were are failed and two are passed. So from the test demo one, test demo one, both of the functions have been failed. From the test demo two, one failed, one passed, and from the test demo three, one passed, one failed. So, from the test demo one, test underscore fun one and test underscore function, both of the test cases have been failed. From test underscore demo two, test underscore fun two and test underscore fun function two have, sorry, test underscore fun two is passed and test underscore function two is failed. And from the test underscore demo three, Test underscore fun three is passed and test underscore fun four is failed. Now, as I told you onto the one note which was the previous video, so into that I clearly, very clearly mentioned up that it's gonna take up the word which is fun from any of the functions, right? I'm using function, I'm using fun one, fun two, but it's simply it's extracting up the fun and it's giving me the respective output. So here's a failure. So test for fun one has been failed. That's the assertion error. This one again failed. Again you have the assertion error. Then test function 2 failed. Your assertion error. Then you have the test underscore fun 4 failed. Again you have your assertion error. So 4 are in total failed. Right? So here from the test underscore demo 1. This particular function has been failed. Your condition has been failed. Which is 32 is equal equal to 24. Then from your test underscore demo 1, your second condition has been failed, which is 90 is equal equal to 21. Okay, moving down, let me go above. Moving uh, right here, so from your test underscore demo 2 file, uh, this uh, pink is equal equal to orange has been failed. And from your test underscore demo 3 file, your python and this has been actually failed out. Right, so in total 4 have failed, 2 have passed and 3 have been deselected. Fine. So this is how you are getting up the complete idea. Let me quickly close this out and get back and let me correct out all the things which I didn't make up wrong. Right. So 8 holes are here is 32. And let me put it as 90. I'm putting up and making up all of my conditions as true. So pink is equal to pink. That's true. And fun 3, this is true. For assert, okay, Python is equal, equal to. Uh, here goes my Python, PY, 
THON. Fine. Let me get back to terminal and let me write up my command. That's the uh, pytest dash k. Here goes fun dash v. Hit out enter. And now just have a look. Okay, once one is again fail. Which one? Oh, I did row 34. I'm so sorry. Uh, let me correct that out. It's 32 right here. Let me get back to terminal once again. So here it's pytest. Uh, pytest dash k then here goes fun and then goes the dash v and then hit out enter so now this time the six have been passed and uh, in total six have been selected three deselected and total items were nine so six have been passed and three have been deselected right so great so hope you got up the idea that uh, with the help of a sub string how you could find and how you could run up your respective test cases what's the command and how does that completely works out right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so uh, right today in this particular video we will be learning uh, that uh, about the markers, right? We'll be learning about the markers in the PyTest which we are having. What are these used for? What's the syntax for making up the markers? And all those respective things will be covered up the, in this particular video. Fine. So let me quickly put up the heading here for the today's topic which we are having up, and that's the markers. So great. Here we go. Uh, putting up this and moving down from here to this and this and this and great. Fine. So uh, now what are we going to do is start. We'll be learning about that markers, right? So we'll be learning about those. Let me start writing and with that only I'll be explaining you the several things regarding the markers. How are they made? What are they used for? What's the use for making up the markers? Okay. So then now great into that particular case. Uh, PyTest. PyTest allows you. PyTest allows us to use markers to use markers to uh, to test functions. Oh, one second. But uh, Py, uh, PyTest allows you to allows us to use markers on on uh, test functions, right? So on test. Function. So, what are the test functions you had made up made up into your test file? So, onto that you could apply up the markers. Fine. Or you could make up the markers for that. Or you could use up the markers into that particular case. Right. So, what are the markers used for? So, here goes that markers are markers are used to. Markers are used to set various. Uh, markers are used to set various, various features, slash attributes, various features, slash attributes to test functions. To test, <coughs> excuse me, to test functions. So, um. Into that markers are used to set up the various features and the attributes to test up the function. So that's the complete use of the markers right here. Right now, into PyTest you did already have up some inbuilt markers as well. So at some sort of point, if these are required, so you could use up the inbuilt markers. Let me tell you that what are the examples for that. So here goes that PyTest. Uh, PyTest provides. PyTest provides many. PyTest provides many inbuilt builds. PyTest provides many inbuilt markers. Many inbuilt markers, uh, such as many inbuilt markers, such as uh, such as xfail, comma skip, and and parameterize. Further, we'll be learning about the parameterize as well in the detail that what's that. But for now, understand this much only that this is one of the uh, inbuilt, uh, I could say inbuilt marker which we have up here. Okay. So, it provides up with many inbuilt markers which are listed up here like the x field, the escape, the parameterize. So, these are the, some sort of um, other things as well, other inbuilt markers which we have up here into the markers. Fine. 
Now, apart from that, apart from, apart from that, users can, apart from that, users can create, users can create their, users can create their own marker, users can create their own marker names. So apart from that, users can create their own markers name. So whatever the like you want to create your own marker, you do not want to use this inbuilt one. So yeah, you could do so. Okay, you can you are actually allowed to do out this respective things. Fine. Now uh, we have a book syntax that, that is used for writing up and making up the markers for a test function. So syntax goes that first of all now it's necessary for you to import up the PyTest library. Till now we were not importing up the PyTest. But now when you move forward with making up the markers with using the parameterize and all those functions in that it's compulsory for you to import up the PyTest library. Okay. So here goes my importing of the PyTest and here we put up at the rate. At the rate PyTest dot mark dot and inside this you are going to put up your marker in, in real it's not going to be like that it means that in real or you do not have to put up the angular brackets but right here for giving up the example this is how it's going to actually be okay so you put it up here as pytest dot mark dot and here in the bracket you put up your marker name respective to whatever you are wishing to make up whenever you are going to use up your own marker name. Okay. So as I had already told you, so for using up this markers, it's it's important for you to import up the PyTest module. Let me write that as well because that's one of the important points which are not to be forgotten actually. Fine. So here I'm going to write. So to use, to use markers, to use markers, we have to to use markers we have to import to use markers we have to import pytest module pytest module in the pytest module in the test file so to use the markers we have to import of the pytest module in the test file okay so into that we can define so for that we can uh, we can define we can define our we can define our own marker names we can define our own marker names to the to the marker name to the tests and to the tests and run the and run the tests having and run the tests having those having those marker uh, one second one second so to use of the markers we have to import of the pythis module into the test file we can define our own marker names to the test and run the test having those one second this is actually completely uh, one second let me use the editor only otherwise it would look too much of messy uh, right here having having those okay having those uh, like uh, having those marker names so here goes my having those marker and here goes my names so right like this you could use up these particular things right here and you could write up your test into that particular respective case okay now let me give you up a very quick example for um, for writing up that particular that how do you write up the and make up the marker name. Let me give you a very uh, simple example into that case. Okay. Now, uh, okay, this one is for making up the marker. Now, when you just want to run that respective marker, one second. This respective one which I did wrote up here, it is for making, it is for making the marker. Okay. Now, when you want to execute or when you want to run your markers, in that case, what's the syntax that has to be used out? So, it's pytest dash m. Into the brackets, you need to use up your 
marker or uh, name and in front of that goes dash v okay so this is the command which is used for uh, running your markers when you want to execute the marker okay so execute the markers so this is the command which is used for executing up the marker fine now uh, in this case the dash m and the dash m marker name this dash m marker name represents re represents the let me get down so here dash m marker name represents the marker represents the marker name represents the marker name of the tests of the tests to be of the tests to be executed of the test to be executed right so this is how your marker actually uh, looks like and this is how you use up and make up your marker so let me take up a highlighter once right here and let me once again clarify the things so pytest allows us to use the markers on test functions right markers are used to set up the various features the attributes to the test functions so pytest provides with many of the inbuilt markers such as xpl skip and parameterize apart from that users can create their own marker names okay so now this at the read pytest at the read pytest dot mark dot marker name now this is the command which is used for making up the marker it's used for making the marker okay not for executing and now to use of the markers we have to import the pytest module uh, in the test file we can define our own marker names to the test and run the test having those marker names okay so uh, this is how your respective marker name actually works out this is how it works out fine so this is pytest dash m marker name dash v and now that's used for executing up the marker so for executing of the marker this is the command which you which is completely used out fine and this dash m marker name it represents up the marker name of the test to be executed right so I am very much clear with all of these respective things which I did mention up here regarding the markers. Now into the further video we are going to see about the practical implementation of making up the markers. Right. This is all for this video. Till then thank you and take care. Hello everyone. My name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So right here we just saw uh, in the previous video regarding the markers. Right. That what are markers and how do we make up the markers. Now, in today's particular video, we are going to see how the practical implementation for making up the markers, right? And how do we use that out? How do we run that out? Everything I'll be covering up right here in this particular video, okay? So, what I'm going to do is that, <coughs> whatever the functions, whatever the test uh, functions we did already made out, I am going to make up the markers onto those respective only. I'm not going to make up the new functions. I would simply write up the functions and make up the markers right here into these particular test files okay so uh into the previous video itself when i was telling you about the theoretical parts regarding the markers so there i did mention up that it's compulsory it's necessary for you to import up the pi test for the very very starting it's compulsory it's necessary for you to do so so i'm gonna write up here the import and here goes a pi test so it means that whenever we you are um, using up the markers whenever you are making up the markers so in that case it's really very compulsory for you to make up the uh, sorry to import up the pi test module okay now uh, moving forward with that what we did so we did saw that um, we were making up the markers and we did saw the command as well for making up the markers right that was by at the rate pytest dot mark dot your marker name whatever your marker name you want to make it out so let me get down here for this one now it, let's say this is my function for which i want to make up the marker name okay so what will i make i would write up at the rate here goes pytest dot mark dot now there is no need to put up the angular brackets for making up the marker name that was a form of syntax which i was telling you right here we do not put up the angular brackets and let's say my um, 
Markan name I made the fast fun. Okay, I want to make up my Markan name as fun. So yes, I did wrote so. Okay, I did write up the similar thing. Now into this there is no such harm for uh, making up or for writing up the uh, markers uh, with sim similar name. Let's say you are having some four or five uh, test functions into your file. So for all of those functions, if you give up the marker name as fun wherever required, so it's there is no such harm in that. So it means a marker name can be repeated once, twice, thrice, or even n number of times. Okay. So in that respective case, it is not gonna show you out any sort of error or anything like that. Okay. Simply, your marker name has to be made up. Now it depends on you. You want to make up different different marker names, or you want to make up a similar marker name. Fine. Okay. Uh, getting down here for the second one, and always the marker name is made up. Uh, above the line where you have declared your function so let's say right here in this example i have declared up my function onto line number 10 okay so above that only i'll be making up my marker it's not the case you make it in between or you make it at last okay whenever you are declaring up your function so you declare up the function and just above the line where you have declared the function will be the line where you'll be making up your marker okay putting up at the rate again here here goes my pie test dot here again goes my mark dot okay for this function let's say again i want to make up the marker which is five and for some cases i'll be writing up some wrong uh, cases as well right here okay uh moving down okay let's say for this i wrote up as reach pi test dot here goes my mark and let's say for this i want to make it up as demo fine so for this respective file, I did make up three markers. First was at the rate pytest.mark.fun. Second was as well the similar, which was uh, at the rate mark, at, sorry, at the rate pytest.mark.fun. And for the third one, I did make up it as at the rate pytest.mark.dem. Okay, so all of these things, three things are very much sorted up here. Now, I would go on to the second file. Again, for this file, first of all, I'm going to import up the PyTest. So, import and here goes my PyTest. Okay, uh, great. Moving down, I'll be making up the marker form. So, here again goes at the rate and one second, at the rate. And here I'm going to write up here the PyTest. Dot, here I'm going to write up the mark. Dot, and for this, I'm going to again make up the marker name as fun. Okay. So here for this, I am going to write up at the rate pytest dot mark. Again, for this, I'm going to make up fun. And let me make up some sort of things wrong. So pink is equal equal to, let's say I wrote up here as A. And the last one which I'm having up here, I am going to make that as demo only. Fine. So it's a pytest dot mark dot and here goes my demo. So I wanted this respective name only to come up here. So I did make that out, fine. Going back on to my file number three. Now I'm gonna show you that what will happen if I'm not gonna import up the PyTest. If I directly start making up my uh, file, why, sorry. If I directly start making up my uh, marker and I did not import up the uh, this PyTest, so what is gonna happen up at that particular phase? So I'm gonna write up at the rate and I'm gonna write up PyTest dot i'm gonna write up mark dot and what is my function name i'm gonna make sorry make up my marker name as fun so see what i'm getting i'm getting up the error okay so now that is the reason it's important for you to import up the pytest because you are using up that respective library right and in python we have a rule that whenever you are using up any respective library so in that case it's necessary for you to first of all import up that library then you could work upon and make up the functions or use of the functions from that respective library. Okay. So that was the reason I was uh, focusing very much into the last video for importing of the PyTest library. Again, here goes at the rate. That's my PyTest dot. It's the mark dot. It's again the fun. Uh, here I'm going to put it as 21, let's say. And for this one, I'm going to make up the marker as PyTest dot mark dot and here i'm gonna make it as demo fine so all of these markers have been made up i'm, I'm gonna go on to the terminal fine now what i'm gonna do is that i am gonna execute out this respective query 
sorry, I'm going to execute out the suspected function and I'm going to see that how I am going to get up the result. Okay, so the syntax which we did learned was PyTest. We put up dash m, then you put up your marker name. My marker name is fun and you put up dash v, right, and hit out enter. So now what it's going to do is that from the markers, it's going to collect up the things and it's going to show you up the different, different sort of things. Okay. So right here, you are having up that from the nine items, the three have been deselected and the six have been selected. So two or three, three have been passed and the three have been failed up. Okay. So your test underscore fun one, it means for which you wait up the marker that this one has been failed and you are generating up the assertion error. Test underscore function 2 has been failed up and test underscore fun 3 how as well been failed up. Right? And here you are having up a short summary. Okay, you are having up a short summary that uh, into this respective summary, whatever the functions you are having up. So for that it is showing that 32 is equal equal to 21. First of all, this function has been failed. Then second one, uh, right here, pink is equal equal to 8. This function has been failed up. And then 2 is equal equal to 21. This has been failed up. Right? So in total, 3 failed, 3 plus, 3 passed, 3 deselected, and 9 warnings you are having up here. Okay. Now what I would do, I would close this out. Fine. For the fun, I did already checked up that how it works. Now I would up, again open the terminal. And this time I'm gonna check it for the demo, which we did also make. So here goes PyTest dash M. And here we have a demo. Or uh, here we have demo and it's the dash V. Okay, hit out enter. So now see that what it is giving me that uh, in total nine items were collected, six were deselected, and three were selected because we did make up the three functions with the marker which was demo. Two pass and one fail. So this is the failed one which is test demo in which 70 is, e is equal equal to 90 has been written. And at last you got up the summary one fail, two pass, six deselected, and nine warnings you are having up right here. Fine. So this is how these markers actually work out and this is how these things completely work up here. And if I'm going to put up all of these functions as true, so now into that respective case, these are not going to give me out any of the failed cases and simply they would result me that all the cases have been completely passed and this much have been deselected and this much have been got the warnings. Warnings you get because if you had used up any other marker name as well into your test file, then uh, for for the marker name which you are calling, for the marker name which you have mentioned, let's say you have mentioned it for fun. So it will execute all of the uh, test functions for the fun. But it will give up the warning for the other markers which you had made. Like here you had made up the demo, right? So that's the other one. So it will give you up the warnings for that particular uh, marker name. So whatever the marker name you have mentioned up and for whatever you are running up the command. Except that. If any of the markers are present up into your data or sorry, present up into your test functions. So it is going to give you up the warnings for that respective one. Right. So hope I'm very much clear with all of these respective things to you that uh, how do we make up the markers and how are, do, do actually these things completely work out. Right. Hope you got up a very clear idea. So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So, um, right into the previous video, we did study about that, um, we did study that what uh, we actually uh, meant from the fixtures, right? We, we learned about the fixtures in a very detailed way, how are they used, and all those things we did see into the previous video, right? Now, today we are going to see out the practical implementation for that, fine? So what I'm going to do is that um, I'm going to open up a new file. I'm going to make up a new test file. So here it goes. And um, the IDE which I am using, that respective IDE right here is the PyCharm. Okay, so here, here goes the Python file and my file name is test underscore. Oh, how come this is test.py cancel? I really do not need this name. I could refactor out that so for renaming we yeah, rename that file so it's test and after the test I want this underscore and I want that to be demo for so, Naya it's completely good to go fine 
what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write up a program for the fixtures. Now you use up the markers, you use up the fixtures, whatever the extra things you are using in the PyTest, it's always important for you to import that out respectively, right? So uh, when I'm using up the fixtures right here, so the very first thing that I have to do is that I have to import up the PyTest library. So if you're not going to import that out, so you won't be able to use out the fixture function that you have up in the PyTest. Okay, so that's why firstly, it is very important for you to do so. So here I'm going to write out import and this goes my PyTest. Very important PyTest. Yeah, that's very much fair here. Whatever I just wrote, I imported up my respective library. Now we did learned about that a function could be made as a fixture function. Right, so onto that we could pass up some parameters and that respective ones are being going to use our a use of my different test functions. We can use them in the different test functions, right? So what I'm going to do here at this respective place is that I am going to make up a function. The letter that's diff. Okay, and uh, here it's my value is in underscore value. Okay, and I'm going to put up the bracket. And that's yeah, it, it's okay. After this, I'm gonna pay take up a variable, it's that's i, and I'm gonna put up some respective value here. Um, let's say it's 20. Fine, getting down, I'm gonna simply return out the i. So, from here, what I have done, I simply take up a variable, sorry, I simply made up a function, uh, which is in underscore value, okay. Now, into that respective function, what did I do? I simply passed up a val uh, variable and stored up a value for that respective variable. So, right here, when, when I just used out i is equal to 20, so in that case, i is my variable and 20 is the value for that. Fine. Then, what did I do? I return up the i. In that respective case, I am returning up the value for i which we are having up okay now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to simply make up the fixture for that okay so here goes at the rate by just dot fixture this is how you make up the fixture okay PyTest is i i'm going to use that PyTest out here because that's my respective library and fixture is the one which I am actually making up here. So it's at the rate pytest dot fixture. Now my function which I was having the PO which is in underscore value that has been converted to the fixture. That has been converted to the fixture. Okay, this is what is actually happening up here. Now, moving down, what I would be doing is that I could use up these respective uh, in underscore value function into my other functions as well. Fine, so here I'm going to make out def. Um, okay, I'm going to write up a function for checking up the, um, let's say for checking up the divisibility of some numbers. Fine. Or either, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that only works out. Uh, okay, I would do it for checking the addition. Fine. So I'm going to write up your test underscore sum underscore uh, test underscore sum underscore. Uh, and right here, my value would be 20. Okay. So, oh, no, no, not 20 because I already gave that. So it's 12. Fine. Now into the bracket, I'm going to pass up that respective function name in which I have my value, which has to be used up. So it's in underscore value. Okay, putting up the colon, getting down here. What I'm going to use is that I'm going to use up my assert function. Into that, I'm going to use up in underscore value. Here goes my addition of 12 and that's equal equal to 20 plus 12 is equal to uh, that's uh, 32. Mm, yeah, let's go put up the correct answer. Fine. Now, in this case, I do not need to use up my in value. I do not use, need to write out that respective value here because it's already being used with my variable, with my function name, which is in underscore value. Okay. 
so that's the reason for doing so getting down i'm using up here def and now next next my function def sorry, sorry test underscore sum uh underscore let's say this time i'm having um 50 okay now again in the bracket i'm gonna pass up the same function that in underscore value which is holding up my value here we go with the assert in underscore value plus and here i'm gonna add up 50 for that and it's double equal to uh 50 plus 20 that's 70 so i'm gonna write up here as 60 okay and i do i want this particular one to be false so this is how you do up let's say i want to make up one more test case okay let's say i want to make up one more test function so def this time again it's gonna test underscore uh some underscore and let's say this time i got it here. In the bracket, I'm going to put up in underscore value. Putting up the colon and then getting down. I have here the assert function in underscore value. Plus, I'm going to add that in here and I'm going to write up here as 40. I know that's the wrong one. But right now, I want my this respective case as well to be failed up. Okay. This is how you make up a fixture function. Now, I just did made up this in underscore value function as a fixture function. So, now I could use that at any place, at anywhere into my respective file. Okay, and again and again, I really do not need to write up the values for this here or there. Fine. So, here we pass that respective function as a parameter and here we did add, give up the values for that. Right. So, I hope I'm clear with that. Let me go on to the terminal and run out this respective one for you. So, uh, the, we'll be using the command that will be running out. So, here we go with the pytest dash k. What's your uh, name which is common? So, my common name is sum, right? And here goes dash v and hit out enter. So, it will run up those respective ones for me and it will resolve them to me as an output. So, yeah, it's going to take up some time in that case. So, what are we going to do is that let me get to above okay he, it collected 12 items nine selected three deselected okay three only selected because um, right in this particular file we have only three functions which are from the name of sum we were having the other files as well which we made that previously but into that none of the places we were having that divisible one so that's why we did it have been so because at every each and every place we were having the other things right so it's not uh, included at that particular place so nine were deselected three selected the first one is passed and second and third are failed okay so here goes your failed one that's the 51 getting down here goes your failed one that's the 10, 10 one so you got up the assertion error and at last you got up the summary two failed and everything fine so i'm going to close this out so hope you got up the idea that how do we make up a function as a fixture function and then how do we use that into our program right so hope i'm very much clear with this particular thing to you right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so um right into the previous video we saw about the fixtures that right how do we make up a fixture and then how do we use that into the program now the example which i demonstrated previously in one single file i make the fixture and in the same file only i just use out that fixture function right now what if i make made up my fixture function in other file and i'm using that in some other file so in that case is it gonna run out is it gonna give you some errors or is it possible to make up a fixture function in the other file and use that in some other file right so we are going to discuss about the same thing in right today's video fine so what i'm going to do is that whatever the things i had wrote up up till now i'm going to comment up everything uh, right here from every uh, okay from all of the uh, test files which i did made up i'm gonna comment up everything which was written up by me uh, till now uh, okay so this as well goes up here and this was my file here yeah, this as well goes up here fine what i'm gonna do is that uh, into my first file i'm gonna make the fixture function and into the other files i'm gonna use up that respective fixture function 
so into the previous video i did already told you that whenever you are making up a fixture function what's the very first thing and very important thing that's needed up so that is needed up is that you have to import up the py test importing of that respective library is one of the very essential thing that uh, is to be done up by you okay so here i go with the import of i okay here we go with the import of the pi test now for making up my fixture function i would go down and let's say it's dev and my fixture function let's say i am going to put up as a num underscore value okay into the bracket will be remained uh, empty putting up the colon getting down i have your the a uh, variable and uh, let's say uh, for me that variable is a fine and into that i set up some value uh my value is 100 let's say fine getting down i'm simply gonna return that out so it's return and it's uh a uh so sorry right here a. so this is how we write up the respective programs or respective function for taking the uh input now if i have to make this as a fixture function i'm going to put up the at the rate sign here i'm going to put up the pi test but and here i'm going to put up the fixture so at the rate Pytest dot fixture. This is how you make up your fixture function, right? So now the num underscore value function which I had made up here, that respective function has uh, that was actually a normal function which I did make up. Now that has been turned into a fixture function that I have done into my test underscore demo one dot py. Now let's say I need to use up this fixture function into my second file. Let's say I want to use that up into my second file. Okay, so I am. Acha, one more thing very important here uh, that has to be mentioned up now. If you are using the fixture function in some other files, so onto those other files, it's as well important for you to import the py test. The very most important thing that you shall keep up into your mind. that importing of the py test will done in all of the files wherever you are going to use up your uh, fixture function so i'm going to use up your import and this is here which goes as py test fine now i'll be making up a normal fun normal test function for me so def it's test underscore uh, i'm going to do it for the multiplication so def multi underscore i'm going to do that from the value which is 5 put up the brackets the colon and get down here uh further into this only i will be using up my assert function so assert what do i have where is my function name so it's num underscore value so assert num underscore oh okay not like this let me put that put it out num underscore value in the bracket as well that's needed right So num underscore value. So assert num underscore value uh, multiplied by five is equal equal to okay. Let me do one thing here. I'm gonna make that a simple ten. Okay, fine. So num ten multiplied by five. I'm gonna put up the correct thing. That's fifty. That's my correct answer for that. Right. Getting down here goes my second fun test function. That's def. And it's test underscore. Uh, it's multi once again. And uh, let's see here. I'm gonna put up the value which is six. Into the bracket, I'm gonna pass up my fixture function. That's num underscore value. Okay. Now I'm gonna put up the assert here. So into that, I'm gonna have here num underscore value, and that's for the multiplication of six. Okay. So, uh, 10 multiplied by 6 is 60. We know, but I'm gonna put up some wrong value. I'm gonna put up as 10 here. Okay. So these were my two cases which I did made up here uh, with the help of my fixture function that I did made previously. Right. Now, if I go to my third file, that's my test demo three. Into this once again, I wanna I wanna use that out. I want to make up the fixture function. So into that, what I'm gonna do is that I am gonna write up here import its py test. Getting down here, I have uh, that I need to use up the fun make up a function so def and its test underscore multi underscore ten. Okay. 
putting up the bracket here goes my parameter that's uh, what i did made up my function name that's num underscore value okay num underscore value putting up the colon getting down here what's my, my function that's my assert function and what value i'm gonna put i'm gonna put num underscore value uh, multiplied by 2 is equal equal to 30. i'm again putting up a wrong value here again goes diff it's test underscore multi underscore this time i am gonna put up as um, okay one second it's 10 so here as well it will be 10 okay and i'm gonna put up here let's say 8 and this time again i'm gonna put up num underscore value colon getting down goes my assert function um num underscore value multiplied by uh it's multiplied by 8 and that's equal equal to 80 so 10 multiplication 8 is 80 but i'm gonna put up as 50 here fine great i did use that up in all of these respective things in all of these respective cases i did use up uh the things right now this is done for this respective for the demo one and for the test demo two for all these suites done i'm going to go on to the terminal and i'm going to run that out i'm going to run through my command so pytest dash k now this time it's multi and dash v and hit out enter let's check out that what's going to help happen out um Collected four items in multi five, multi six, multi ten, and multi eight. It is saying that for all of these, you have the errors, right? So let me do one thing. Let me close this out from here. And yeah, I did make up the fixture function. Great. So now what's happening up here is that what the the thing that's happening up is that it's giving me that uh, error for all of these respective cases, right? So whatever I did make up here in the uh, test demo one, in regards of that, I just put up the num underscore value, right? And one second, right here I go, I had gone with the num underscore value, and right here I have again gone with the num underscore value, right? So in all of these respective cases, it's gonna give me out the error. Fine. So hope I'm clear with that, that uh, like if you put up a fixture function in other file and you are using that fixture function in some other file. So how it's actually going to report out and how it is going to give you the output into that particular case. Right. So hope I'm very much clear with this particular thing to you. Right. So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So uh, now we are going to learn out a new topic into the PyTest and that's the parameterizing test. Parameterizing of a test. Okay. What's that? We are going to see up right here in this particular video. So let me once very quickly put up the topic. So it's parameter, M-E-T-E-R-I-Z-O-O-Z-I-N-G, parameterizing of a test fine so that's parameterizing of a test now what we will be learning here into this i will be writing up the definition for that that what it actually is and it's very simple okay uh neither uh, uh in front of this parameterizing the fixtures and the markers were a little complicated but it's not like that let me show you how so um here i'm going to write up the definition so i'll be writing that uh, parameterizing m e t e r i z i n g okay parameterizing of a test parameterizing of a test is is done to parameterizing of a test is done to run the test is done to run the test against is done to run the test against multiple sets multiple sets of inputs multiple sets of inputs first of all <coughs> in parameterizing what do you do um <coughs> sorry for that okay oh uh, let's say i i did have a function i did make up my test function one test function i did make up 
right uh, now i want to run out that respective test function for many use cases let's say uh, to what we were doing we are making up different different functions and in that different different functions either we have to multiply that with a different number or we have to subtract that with a different number we need to make up different different test functions right this was what we were doing up to now but now with the help of this parameterizing of a test what you could do you could make up a tuple okay and inside that tuple you could give up your relevant uh, input values whatever are actually required whatever you want to give you could give up that respective relevant values right and you could simply make up one test case and you could run that respective one test case for all of the those use cases for what you want to run about now that's pretty simple as we were doing from previous things right in the previous we were having many functions to be made up and all those things let's say i want to subtract out two two different values for let's say i have six pairs and in that six pairs i want to i only have the value subtraction but for that as well i need to make up six different uh, test cases and you make made up six different use cases then uh, test functions and then i need to separately run all of those so that was a tedious work right but in parameterizing you make up a tuple you give up all those respective values whatever you want to give the subtraction you give it a pair or whatever you wish out and simply make up one test function write your sqlt command and it will do out the relevant thing for you it means that it will run up the test case for all of those use cases given by you for the subtraction okay so i guess i guess that you are very much clear with that and yes this is a thing which will save your time while writing up the test and test if you just want to run out that respective test for multiple things for multiple values for multiple inputs so parameterizing of the test is the one which is going to save up your time in that respective case right moving forward um how do we initialize that out it means that how do we use this out so we use that out with the help of a marker okay first of all we make up the marker and after that we make up the parameters i should remember that when i told you about the markers there i told you that there are some inbuilt markers as well in the definition only when i was dealing with the uh, theoretical part in the make markers i told you that for the inbuilt marker there is one marker which is named as parameterize if you watched out that respective video so yeah you must be very well aware of that i told you there so yes that same inbuilt marker we are going to use out today and that's the parameterize fine so now it's an inbuilt marker so obviously it's the case that first of all i'll be using the marker i'll be making up the marker after that i'll be using the parameterize function so how do we do that out simply put at the rate importing of the pytest and all the things are common so i'm not going to repeat that again and again so here goes at the rate first of all you need to declare the pytest because marker and parameterize dono ka both of those comes under the pytest so in that case it's necessary for you to uh, put up this pytest here pytest and it's the here goes the dot here i made up my marker dot and here i use up my function that's para metrize para metrize okay pytest dot mark dot para metrize fine so now into that respective case this is how i made this up like you could do you can make up the parameterizing of a test by simply using the markers so yeah i did so i used up the marker and yes my my parameterize function actually works very fine here fine so this is how you make up the parameterize right so hope i'm clear with that first of all that um, how do you make up your function as a parameterized function now let me quickly give you a example here for the use of this particular thing so let's say i have some pairs i have the pair of 10 comma 5 okay then okay all of them will be defined inside a tuple now you will be using a tuple inside a tuple okay so it's 10 comma 5 and then next, next let's say i am having 20 comma 10 uh thirdly i'm having 30 comma 20 let's see these these values i'm having okay i'm having up these respective values now what is required up here is that i want to write up the test case i want to write up the function for all of these three 
use cases which I did, I which I did wrote up here. Right, I need to write that out. Into that perspective case, what I am going to do is that I would simply make up a first of all, I'll be making up a parameterize. Okay, wherever you will be declaring up these, you will be declaring that inside a parameterize function. So you write here at the rate pytest dot mar dot parameterize para uh, metrize. And now into the bracket, you put up all of these respective values, whatever are mentioned up at this particular place, put up all of those three right here. Okay. Now after that, make your test function. Let's say it's diff test underscore one, put up the bracket. Now, uh, one second. Inside this bracket, now there is one thing that has to be put up by you. That is the two parameters. Okay. The first one will be the N and the second one will be O. Okay, now that depends on to your choice, whatever you want to put up. N means the number and O is your output. So number is 10 and uh, it's, it's somewhat of output is 5. Right now, how do I do that out? I could simply use up assert. Okay, and I could write up my num is 10. So I could write up here uh, N minus 5 is equal to O. So now for this, if I take up this test case, which is 10 comma 5. So for this, what's from the value of n? n value is 10, right? Minus 5. So what's the value of my output? That's 5. So that's similar. It is a completely similar to the value which I did put up here into my uh, tuple, which I did made out. Right so now, every time I do not need to write up a different and different and different cases, right? It's, this time it's going to be. 20 minus 5 and that's equal to in real it's equal to 15 but output I have given us 10. So it will show me that this 20 comma 10 is your failed case. Same thing goes for 30 comma 20. When I put the value for n as 30 so 30 minus 5 is 25. But what's my output value which I had given in a tuple? So it's 20. So in that case it's again going to show me that your test case has failed. So in total, I'll be having one passed test case and two failed test cases. Okay. So hope I am clear with that, that what I meant from the parametrize function. So now let's say you, you have different pairs and you have to subtract out those different pairs. So you could simply use that out like this. Now you do not need to make out three different test functions. Making a one test function and writing out the tuple is only going to work out in this particular case. Okay, hope I'm very much clear with that. Further in the next video, we will be seeing the complete practical implementation of the parameterized function. That's how we can uh, do the practical implementation of the parameterized. Now, practically, it's a little different as I told up right here. The, the, I just simply told of the logic here. Okay, the format of writing is a slight different in the practical okay so let's uh, see that into the next video so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well uh, after learning out the, the the complete theoretical part regarding the parameterizing of a test today right here we'll be seeing up that how do we implement that parameterizing of a test practically okay so there I told you in the parameterizing of the test that uh, it makes easier for us to write up the test cases, to put up the test cases and all those respective things, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make up a new test file. Uh, my test file goes from here. So into that I'll be making up a new test file and into that only I'll be writing up my test for the parameterize. So my test file name is test underscore demo file and hit out enter fine pretty clear now i am really going to put up my uh parameterizing now i i did told up that it is an inbuilt marker right uh, that's completely an inbuilt marker so into that we are still be requiring up the pytest library because that's an inbuilt marker so obviously first of all you need the marker then only you'll be using up that parameterize function and for using of the marker, it's important for you to use up the PyTest. And for using the PyTest, you have to import that out. Okay. So here I'm going to write up here as import PyTest. Fine. Getting down here, I have um, now. 
what i would be doing is that i will be making a, a parameterized uh, first of all i'll be using up the pytest and making the marker and parameterize for that okay so i'm going to put up here at the rate okay i'm going to put up here at the rate and this is my pytest dot mark dot para parameterize city this is how it's working this is how it actually works out you have the pytest library okay you have the pytest library and from that perspective pytest library you have to make up the marker okay after making up of the marker you have to use up the parameterize function for the parameterizing of the test fine now after this you have to give up the two variables two respective variables that that respective ones will be passing up as a argument to inside the functions again i would repeat because it's very important after using this you will be um, what you'll be doing is that you will be giving two variables here inside the parameterized function okay what will be those variables those will be passed as an argument to your function which will be defining after this respective line okay so putting up the bracket and inside that giving giving up here n and i'm going to put up uh right n comma o so n is my number and o is my output for that okay now putting up a comma first of all i'm going to make up a list inside that i'm going to define up the several okay so um i will be using up here um, okay let's use up here the division okay percent it means the percent sign so i'm going to use that out um yeah sure let's use no uh, okay let's not use the percent let's use up the addition okay so my number is uh, 5 and a final addition i'm going to put up as 10 5 comma 10 my two values okay next i am having 6 comma 12 okay thirdly i am having 7 comma 14 and next i am simply having 8 comma 16 or oh, 1 6 fine let me minimize up the size a little bit so that you are able to see up the things very properly right here so i did wrote up all of these respective uh, values i did wrote up all of these respective cases which i want to give up into my respective program right that's pretty much sorted once again for though i need to define up my function so my function is okay it's test underscore at underscore uh values my test name okay inside the bracket i'm gonna put up n comma o my two of the parameters which i did used up inside my parameterized function these were the same two parameters right these were the simply two parameters which i did use inside of, uh, i did use that inside my parameterized function so whatever the values which are uh, defined inside the tuples and which are at the first position those are my n and whatever the values inside the tuple are at the second position that's after the comma that's all are my o that's my output okay so now after this i will be using up here assert um okay and what are you doing is that i'll be writing up here let's say five okay five multiplication n is equal equal to o is equal equal to o okay you could write it up like this you could write up that n plus o is equal equal to let's say 10 like this you could write that out so it completely depends on you that how and what is the way which you are going to prefer up here i'm going to write up there n plus um and value i am gonna give it as it's a six is equal equal to o uh, like this one o fine so this is how i wanted to put up my condition what it is gonna do first of all it is gonna go at this particular position it will check five plus six is equal equal to uh 10 no it's not equal to 10 it's equal to 11 
it will show that for this respective 5 comma 10 your test case has been failed if i go for 6 comma 12 so n value is 6 and output is 12 okay so 6 plus 6 is equal equal to 12 yes that's so true so for this 6 comma 12 it's going to show that yes your output is correct for this particular case moving forward here it's again going to go for 7 comma 14 so 7 plus 6 it's going to compare out so i guess that's 13 7 8, 8, 8 yeah it's 13 but 13 is not equal equal to 14 so again it's going to give you the test case has been filled and so here goes for 8 and 6 so it's 14 it's not 16 so again it's going to show the test case has been filled let's go on to the terminal and let's try running this out very quickly here so i'm going to put up here uh, pytest dash k and it's my add right one second um yes that's add and here goes dash uh, we add it out enter let's see now what it's actually gonna uh, give up here as an output for us so here we go see uh, it has selected in total 8 items, 4 deselected, 4 selected, maybe some of the other were already deselected, sorry, some of the other were uncommented, so that's why it's showing, but no matters. Here we are having that for the 5 and 5 and 10 values, 5 comma 10, if the test case has been filled, I told you that. For the 6 comma 12, the test case has been passed, so true. For 7 comma 14, test case has been failed. And for 8 comma 8 comma 16, again the test case has been failed. So, for only one of the values, the test case has been passed. For rest of all those, the test case has been failed. Right? So, here it shows the failures, whatever we got up. So, for N5 and O10, this has been failed up because 11 is not equal to 10. Then, it, it has been failed for 7, 14 because 13 is not equal to 14. And then, it has again failed up. For um, 7, 14 is 10. It has been filled up for 8 and 16. So, 14 is not equal to 16. Right? So, this is how it's actually here. And a short summary is given up. That um, in the test underscore demo 5.py file, your this respective function for the value 5, comma 10 has been filled. Again for 7, comma 14 and again for 8, comma 16. And in total, three have been failed and one is passed and four are deselected. Okay. Now, let me give it a try here. Let me correct up all those values. So, 5 plus 10 is, sorry, 5 plus 6 is 11. This one is 12. And here it's 13. And for this, it's 14. Right now, this is true. I would go on to the terminal and I would run that out. So, here I would simply have PyTest dash k it's uh, add and dash v and hit out enter now it's gonna do me the past for all those because whatever the values i did made up here and all of those are falling uh, like completely following the condition okay so yes 6 plus 5 is 11 6 plus 6 is 12 6 plus 7 is 13 and 6 plus 8 is 14 right so into that respective cases all of my test cases test functions actually values for that whatever i did give up all of those have completely been passed up here right and that is the reason it's showing me that all of those four have been passed up here right i'm going to close this out for here so now this what it did it makes your program easier right it makes your program easy right otherwise if we have to check for these four you would have defined four different test functions Right, you would have done that so, but using the parameterized function, simply you have to use up a uh, one test function and it, into that you could put up different values and, and check out your respective answers. Right, so hope I am very much clear with this parameterized function that how does that actually work and what's the output and how it's gonna work out right here into the practical implementation okay so i hope this is very much clear to you so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhi we hope you all are doing well so um now we're going to learn about the new functions two new functions which we have up here in the pie test okay so uh those two new functions which we are going to learn about right here are the skip and 
x pair x cube and the x pair these are the two different functions which we are having up here into the test uh, into the pi test fine now uh, what are the cases what are the situations where these would be used what so first let's discuss about the situations then i would move forward with the other things in this particular one okay now let's consider uh, let's consider so here goes consider my first condition could be that uh, maybe a test is not relevant a test is uh, one second a test is not relevant due to due uh, due to uh, some reasons due to some uh, reasons for some time this could uh, this can actually happen at a test is not relevant for some time because of some reasons right a uh, one case which could appear up while you're writing up your test while you're running that out correct further a new feature a new feature um right here a new feature is being implemented a new feature is being um implemented implemented a new feature is being implemented and and we already and we already added a and we already added a test for that feature now it can happen that a new feature is being implemented but into that for that respective feature we already add a test case now this could as well be one of the condition now, now these are the type of conditions in which you have to use up the x fail and you have to use up the skip functions okay x fail and skip functions these are the relevant cases where they are required to be used up okay hope i am clear with that one second let me get down very quickly right here um so these are the these are the situations these are the situations uh, where the uh, x fail and skip x fail and skip uh, functions will one second these are the situations where the x fail and the skip functions will work fine so now that's pretty much clear that's absolutely pretty much clear into those conditions that okay these are the situations where you could simply uh, use up the x fail and the skip functions and these are the places where these functions are going to work out right now uh, what it will do the pipe is what it will do uh, let me tell you that particular thing as well. So I'm going to write it out from you. That PyTest. PyTest will execute. PyTest will execute the. PyTest will execute the X failed test. Whatever the X failed test. Whatever the test you have made out using the X failed function. It will execute that out. But. But, but what is it is going to do, but it will, but it will not be considered, but it will not be considered as, uh, but it will not be considered as part field, part field or passed tests or pass p a w s e d or passed tests okay so pytest will execute the x fail test but it will not be considered as part fail or the passed test okay it will be executed there is no such thing that it, is, it will not get executed but the execution whatever is going to happen either it won't be considered uh, as a part or uh, or uh, that will be shown as a passed test okay this is what's gonna happen up here so whatever the details will be there so i would write up that details 
details of those details of those tests will not be will not be printed details of those tests will not be printed even uh, will not be printed even if even if the even if the test fails okay so details of those tests will not be con will be not be printed even if the test fails as well okay so this is how this uh, will be done okay now this is about the uh, x fail now how uh, it's like what's the syntax for the x fail so you're going to use out at the rate pi test dot now that's as well one of the markers so yes you need to initialize the marker dot x Fail. When I told about the markers, so there I did told about the suspective one, right? That's the X fail. Fine. So now into that particular other rate pi test dot mark dot X fail. Done. Okay. Now, what about that skipping one? So, is, is skipping a test, is skipping of a test means, is skipping of a test means that, means that the that the test means that the test will not, it will not be executed. It means the test will not be executed. Okay, that, that respective part, that respective test will be skipped out and it won't be executed. Fine. So, what's the formula? So, I would, so not the formula, the syntax. I could write up that we can, we can skip. Um, let me get down very quickly. So yeah, we can skip up. We can skip uh, tests. We can skip tests using. We can skip test using the following. Using up of using the following marker. Okay, we can skip up the test using the following marker. And that at the rate by test dot mark dot skip okay so this is how it's gonna skip up the test okay this is the marker which was actually used which is actually gonna be used for skipping up that respective marker right so simply by as you define up the fixtures and everything simply above the function you could define up at the rate by test dot mark dot x fail and at the rate pi test dot mark dot skip so that portion will be uh, simply either it will be escaped or it will be x fail okay so hope i am very much clear with this let me quickly give you a very quick recap of whatever we did learned out in this particular so skip and the x fail function so the when when are these ones used these two functions so these are used whenever either a test case is not relevant due to some reasons for some time or or a new feature is being implemented and we already added a test for that respective feature okay now these are the situations where the x fail and the escape functions will work out so pytest will execute the x failed test but it will not be considered as part failed or passed test fine right? so the details for those tests will not be uh, printed even if the test so here at the rate pi test dot mark dot x fail is for the x fail and skipping a test means that the test will not be executed you can skip the test by using the following marker that's at the rate pi test dot mark dot skip right so hope i am very much clear with this particular thing as well that how you could do out these respective things how you could use up these respective functions right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so um now we are going to start out and learn out a very uh like interesting topic into the pi test okay we had seen up till now that we write up the test cases using many things using markers we make fixtures we make the parameterizing everything we do right and we have some failed test cases some past now let's see what if there is a case that you want that after this much of maximum failed cases stop running up my test case at that respective place only what i mean to say that let's say you wrote up a test file 
okay into that you mention up some three four test functions now into the, those test functions what was happening that uh, your file okay the file which you were having into that you put up four functions into those four functions the first three have been filled and the last one only was passed now you want that uh, in my file if two if maximum two k test cases have been failed so stop running up my file at that particular place only okay so that is what is yes possible in the pi test as well so that same thing we are going to learn up today and that is stopping the stopping the test file after n fails okay stopping up my test file after the n fails okay after this much number of fails please stop my test file at that place only okay yes so hope i am clear with this particular thing to you very clearly let me take up a new pen let me tell you that how we can proceed and how we can write up with the things for the further okay now um fine Achha, whenever you want to stop up the execution of a test suit after a n number of fails, so you use up a function that's called as a max fail. Let me show you. Let me write that here. Um, not this. It will start from whenever. So here goes that whenever uh, you want, whenever you want. Uh, yeah, you want your file to stop whenever you want your file to stop after after n uh, test uh, fails after n test fails then then you use then you use then you use the uh, x field sorry then you use up the the max fail okay then you use up the max fail so whenever you want your file to stop after the n test fails then in that respective case you use up the max fail function okay so respective to that that is the respective function which is used up for stopping up your file after the n test fails okay so what's the syntax that you use out here? So the syntax that you use out here is pi test dash dash. It's the max fail and is equal to num. Okay. So when you write up your file and after that you run up your program, into that you are going to put up this respective pi test dash dash max fail is equal to num. And here you are going to put up the value that after this much of failed cases, t is stop running up your particular program okay now let me show you how are the further things gonna be up here um let me write up a quick uh, pi test test file okay let me write up a test file right here and then let's check it out for the further things so okay let's say it's def and for the dot i want to write up test underscore a okay into that i put up my condition that assert 5 is equal equal to 4 okay second is def it's test underscore b colon and my second condition i want up here to be 10 is equal equal to 20 okay next moving down with the third case so let's say my third case is def test underscore c my third condition is uh, assert 4 is equal equal to 2. Let's say my fourth test condition is this, def test underscore d and 9 is equal equal to 9 and here goes my assert function. Okay, so this all is done up by me. I did wrote up all of these four functions a, b, c and d and yes that are completely pretty fine to be wrote, like written up here at this particular place right now further what's needed up by by me at this particular place is that when i run this out in the terminal okay when this run, i run this out in the terminal let's say i wrote up my command that's pytest dash dash 
max field is equal to and let's say my value i put it up here as 3 so what it will do that after the maximum after the three test failures it will stop running up that respective test file for me so right here when it start it will find that okay this test field this we has been failed this is the one second one as will be failed because 10 is equal equal to 20 is the wrong case this is again failed and now let's say this is the one which is failed it is again failed for is equal equal to 2 so what it is going to do is that it's not going to go further on to the test number 4 that's my test underscore d now it doesn't matter how that this test is being passed or this test is being failed it's not going to come up onto this respective test file for me hope you are getting up the idea whatever i'm trying to say to you right so this respective test file uh, isn't found out here so def test underscore d and assert 9 is equal equal to 9 into that respective case it simply exits out from the test number 3 only now let's say i once again root up the command and now my num value i give it as 2 so what's gonna happen up it's gonna check out the very first one so that's failed okay it will go on to second one that's again failed so it will stop up that at that particular place only it's not going to come onto the test underscore c and test underscore d it's not going to come up in both of these respective files in test underscore a and test underscore b it's going to fail up at that both particular places only right so hope i'm clear with this thing to you very clear with this particular thing that how are these things going to work and how these things actually work and take place right so uh, at whatever the test case it finds out that okay the test this time has been failed or the things like that so it simply exits up at that particular place it's not going to move further or the things like that at that particular time right great so this is how this max fail function is used that whenever you want that your file shall stop at after n test fails then in that respective case you use up your max fail function so the syntax which you go ahead is that pi test dash max fail is equal to num right and you have the test a test fail that example i did show you right so the practical will be seeing up into the next video not right in this particular video we'll be seeing up the practical in the next video so maybe there you will be getting a more clear and more clear idea regarding this particular thing okay so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhavi hope you all are doing well so into the last video we did saw about that how you could write up the max fail function right that uh, let's see you have to put up a failure function that that after this much number of failed test cases now further do not run out my test file right so for that how do we do we just saw that into the last video right here i'm going to put up the practical for the same uh, so from practical it will be very much more clear that how does this actually works out so my test file name will be test underscore demo six dot py and then hit out enter great and i'm going to cancel this out right here what i'm going to do is that i'm going to put up some several test cases uh, test functions and further with that we'll be proceeding and checking up about the things and all those particular ones okay um great so i'm going to import up the pi test so import pi test fine getting down okay my very first function i'll be making up here so that's diff and let's say it's test underscore uh, test underscore uh, okay that's check and second test underscore check one putting up the brackets putting up the colon getting down a third function goes up in a condition that 12 is equal equal to 24 yeah i know that it's it's completely wrong so that's why i was trying to put it up here next is going let's say it's test underscore check two. okay next test underscore check two putting up the colon once again getting down here goes my once again the assert function i have now let's say 34 is equal equal to 80 fine one more test case failed coming down i have my third test function dev test underscore check three putting the brackets putting the colon again getting down 
here is my third function. So it's 81 is equal equal to 34. Again, it's wrong for me, right? This time I'm going to put up the correct one. So the test and the score check four and to the bracket I'm going to put up like this, and it's assert is equal to uh, sorry assert ten is equal equal to fine. Like this is the thing which I did wrote up here. Now. I want to run up this particular thing. I'm to run up this respective file. Now, this time I'll be running up only this respective file only. Okay, I won't run out everything. So you need to write up the command that's pytest. Um, after that, you need to write up the variable. Sorry, your file name. So it's test and is score demo six dot uh, dot py. Okay, you have a dash v here, and after that you have max. So how many maximum failures you want? I want the maximum failures to be three. Okay, hit out enter. Let's see what it is actually gonna be, what it is actually gonna collect, and what output are we going to get it out from here? Fine. Now, see, it collected up four items from my file that was demo and is test underscore demo six. It collected up four items, but it has run only three items. Because the top three uh, test functions which I did put up here, those were wrong. Those were false. Okay, those were completely false. Those are failed. My condition was as soon as you get up three uh, functions which are failed up, stop up that particular place. Not need, no need to move forward from there. So it did so. See, failures was test underscore check one was failure because 12 is not equal to 24. Second, test underscore check two was a failure because 34 is not equal to 80. And the third check was as well a failure because this 81 is not equal to 20, 34. So here is a short summary, test summary info that these three functions are false for you and it has stopped up after the three failures. So three failed in this much number of times. Okay, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to once again run out a command for the demonstration. Let's say this time it's pytest. Uh, pytest and my file name was uh, test underscore demo 6 dot py. Okay, test underscore demo 6 dot py. Um, moving forward next I will be having dash v dash dash max fail function. And let's say this time I want maximum to fail you. So as soon as you reach the maximum two failures, stop my program after two failures. So here we go that it in total collected up four items, but the first two it found as failed. So it stopped at that particular place only. The test check one was wrong. The test check two was wrong. And the summary is that it has stopped after two failures because that was the command which was given up by me. Now let me connect up some test cases here. Oh, let's say first one I'm going to correct it out. 12 is equal equal to 12. And uh, let me correct up this one. This 81. Okay. Now if I run it out. I would go onto the terminal. I'm going to write up here pytest. My file name is test underscore demo 6 dot py dash v dash dash. Okay. It's dash dash max uh, max fail and it's 2. Hit out enter. Now. See what it did for me. It had taken all of my collected of four items and even it displayed me all four items because my condition was that maximum I want maximum two failures. So it means that up till I was having up two failures till the time I do not get up the two failures. It's uh, like please run up my program. Like keep running up my respective program till the time I do not get up two failures. So that's how we are getting it up here that um, here I was having only one failure into my program. That was my test check too. So see what it did. It simply taken as that it had taken that a summary was that into your test demo 6.py file. Your test number check 2 was wrong. It means it has been failed. So in total one failed and three passed. Okay. One more thing to mention up here in this regard that now if I'm going to write a pytest, uh, I'm going to write a pytest and my test underscore demo 6 dot py dash v dash dash max fail 1. 
now it's going to run up only two here because after uh, as soon as i get a one failure into my program stop running running that out so the first test case was passed that's very true but the second one was failed okay so test take two was failed because 34 is not equal to 80 so here it told that okay i stopped it after one failure so in total one failed and one passed so i hope that you're noticing that as soon as whatever the value i put up that okay after this value is stop running my program or after that value is stop uh, uh, executing my test function so it's doing so right so in this case the max fail is the function which was helping is and actually which is helping us to do out the same respective thing whatever the value you put it up here in respective of that value if that condition satisfies like if three are the failures maximum failure are three or maximum are five maximum are ten so as soon as it satisfies out that respective condition it is gonna stop up at that particular place only okay it's not gonna proceed forward it doesn't care you have 10 more cases or 20 more cases or 20 30 more functions it doesn't matter that out whatever the condition you did give out here it is going to take up that condition it's going to follow up that out and stop at a respective uh, relevant position where it is supposed to do so okay so hope i am clear with that let me quickly give a revise that what did we do we made up different tests now here if we do not import the pytest so that's not important okay so here we did uh, give up four test cases here and into that what i was trying i was trying to check it out that after this much number of maximum test cases is it gonna stop or it is not gonna stop so yes that completely stopped up at after the respective given test cases let's say i give up my maximum value as four sorry maximum value as three so when i got the three maximum failures it stopped at that running at that particular place right so this is how my program was running so into that i gave up four test cases the above three in the starting the above three i made wrong and last one was true then after that i made up some several more conditions true and we just simply ran up our program and got the output for that right so hope i am very much clear with this particular thing to you that how it is actually gonna work and how does the max fail function actually works and how do you use that out right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care hello everyone my name is shambhi we hope you all are doing well so um we saw out the practicals for many of the topics here for making that test for fixtures um for parameterized function for many 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 things we did see up the practicals up till now right so now what i'm gonna do up here is that i'll be giving you a very um clear idea or you could say up a very recap of the practical implementations which we did see up till now okay so onto that case basically what's the idea the idea is that uh, we did have out uh, like first of all we understood about making up the test right that how do we make up and implement out the very basic test so i'll be starting up from that respective place only so let's say i'll be starting up while the writing that's diff and in front of that i i really need to make up one of my functions so that would be called as a test function for me so it's test and a score and it's let's say uh, the test name I'm gonna give it as sum. Okay, that's sum like this. Fine. I put up the bracket, put up the colon, and I would just get down here at this particular place. Okay. Now what I'll be doing up here is that I will be moving forward, and let's say I would be doing some addition or putting up some condition into that case, right? So we did all this so out that if anything like this we are gonna do out so in that respective case we have one thing that has to be noticed up right clear here and yes that's the important thing as well that we need to use up the assert function so as we used out if else in the previous cases and as we did use out the if else for the rest of the cases for here for this respective um for this respective i would say that the test functions whenever you are making we use up the assert function right so hope i'm very much clear with that so i'll be writing up here the assert and moving further with that i will be putting up here as um, let's say it's 5 plus 12 okay now 5 plus 10 let's say 
and that's equally equal to 20 if I put that out. I know that that's the wrong one because I just for now I just want to make up my functions. Uh, so I make up my test cases field. Okay. For that I will correct them out. But right now I have something to discuss here. Uh, that's the reason I am giving up the wrong answer for this respective test function. Okay. That's pretty much pretty much sorted. Next again comes my next uh, test function. So let's say that's test underscore um di double f that's gonna be the difference like difference between the numbers it means the subtraction now for this again as well i'm going to put up the assert function now one more thing regarding the assert function is that uh, if you wrote up your test cases and into those respective test cases if your one condition gets failed okay if that respective test case uh, does not pass it means that if that respective test case fails so into that respective case, you get up an error and that sort of error is known as assertion error. Okay, so that's called as an assertion error. So what's that assertion error about? So whenever you are having up the idea for um, having a test case has failed, so it shows you that, okay, this test case has been failed or for you and you did give up some wrong uh, things here. And this is a sort of assertion error. Okay, so this is the one more thing which comes here with the assert function. Again, moving further here, I'm going to put up assert and the difference now I'm going to put up here as um, 10 minus 9 is equal equal to, I'm going to put it as 2. Okay, so this is as well, 10 minus 9 is equal equal to. To find this one is as well very much, pretty much clear. Next, I'm going to put it as uh, def test underscore pro. So that's uh, that's for the product, that's for the multiplication. So into this again, I'm going to do out the multiplication for the two numbers. The procedure remains absolutely same. That's first of all, you need to put up the assert function um, right here. And after that, you need to do up the further respective things, whatever are required. So I'm going to put up here the assert. And uh, now for the product, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write up here 6. Uh, multiplication 2 is equal equal to 12 okay so that's my product and I'm having up a last one as well that's this and is for uh, div okay so that's for the division and here I'm going to put up the condition that assert um, 2 modulo 10 is equal equal to uh, Okay, one second. If uh, I'm going to put it as if 10 modulo 2 is equal equal to 0, it means that uh, 10 divided by 2, uh, the modulus gives us a remainder, right? So in that case, I just put that out right here. Fine. So if you just want out the question, so you could just instead of this person sign, you could put up a slash, okay, backslash, and that will be your division sign. Great. So first of all, hope I'm very much clear uh, with this test case which I had wrote up here for the reference that uh, what are the things that are needed up here. You have the test addition, you have test difference, you have test product and then you have test division. So these are the respective things which you are having up here at this particular base and that are actually needed to be sorted out, right? Now, um, I would minimize, sorry, I would just put up the size a little bit smaller now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go on one second I'm going to go on uh, to this terminal and from this terminal I'm going to run out this respective file that's test underscore demo one dot p1 okay so what's the command that we use we use the command that's pytest dash v and in front of that you write up your respective file name whichever you want to run out so test underscore demo one dot py okay and hit out enter so this is how you run up your respective uh, file here into the pytest if you're going to run out for the console so for that respective console it's gonna like be uh it will show you that okay you do not have any error but it is not gonna get you that give you that or uh, what are the test cases which are passed or what are the ones which are failed actually okay so for getting out those respective things, you need to run that onto the terminal only. So here we have um, one second, right? So it, in, it collected in total four items. So 
in that respective four items the first test case has been failed that is test underscore sum and the second one is as well failed that's test underscore di double f that's the difference one the test underscore pro that's the product one has been passed and test underscore div that's the division one that is as well being passed okay now the failures here which we are having up are test underscore sum okay so in the test underscore sum what do we have we have the function that's the assault okay we, we did put that out and what was my case my case was 5 plus 10 is equal equal to 20 so 5 plus 10 is 15 and is 15 equal equal to 20 no it's not so here we just caught up the uh, assertion error and the test case has been failed same goes for here as well 10 minus 9 is 1 and is 1 equal equal to 2 again no this is as well wrong case okay, so here again you got up the assertion error and your test case has been failed so at last you get up a very short summary info regarding your complete uh, test cases which have been uh, performed out and in this case you get uh, only the ones only the info for those of the test cases which have been failed not for the one which have been passed out okay so here goes fail test demo one dot py test sum minus so 15 is equal equal to 20 and same goes for test underscore diff uh, that's the difference one so one is equal equal to two so these are the ones which have been failed out so here at last you get up that two test cases have been failed and two of them have been passed so this is how and this is what you get up the final answer here that the two of them have been failed and two of them have been passed right so hope i'm clear with that that how do you simply uh, run up your test according to the given conditions or according now if i make all of those as correct right here so one second just let me quickly move above where i have written up right here now let me do it as 10 plus uh, 5 hours 15 that's the correct answer which i had to put it up and 10 minus 9 is equal equal to 1 okay this time i added all of those test cases as correct now I'm going to write up your PyTest dash V and uh, in front of that, I'm going to write up test, uh, test underscore demo one dot py and hit out enter. So now into this respective case, yeah, see what did I got? I got out that four of the test cases have been passed here. All the fours have been passed. So in total, it collected all the four items. And as an output as well, it got all of those four dots passed. And in the final answer, four passed is 0.19 seconds, right? Great. So, this is how you actually write up your test cases. And this is how you execute that out. This is how you understand that what are the ones which are wrong. And what are the ones which are correct. Which are the ones that have failed. And which are the ones that have been passed. Right, so hope I'm very much clear with this particular thing to you that how do we do out all of these respective things, right? So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care. Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So now what we'll be doing is that I will be taking you towards the fixtures, okay? Now that's one of the very um, useful and one of the very important topic which we did study in the PyTest. So let me give you some few more examples regarding the fixtures that how do we make out the fixtures and how do we use that throughout our projects. Sorry, uh, yeah. Okay, so... Uh, what I'm going to do is that I have the same file in which we did make up the fixtures so onto the same only. I'll be writing up some sort of um, program and further we'll be proceeding on. Fine. So now here what I'll be doing is that first of all, now uh, whenever we are dealing up with the fixtures and those, those respective things, so it's really important for me to make up the fixture. And for making that, it's uh, important for me to uh, import the PyTest library. Okay. So I'm going to import up here as PyTest and uh, let me uh, increase the font size. Okay, so yeah, PyTest is one of the libraries which I wanted to import up here because we are making up the fixtures and fixtures are a sort of uh, the things which comes under the PyTest right here. Okay, so that's the reason I did so. I did so. Now, uh, after importing of the PyTest, now what we'll be doing is that we'll be making up a function. Okay, now 
uh, with two, that respective function, what we'll be doing is that I will be giving up some input for the values here. Okay. I will be giving up the input for the values and that's what we'll be writing up here into this particular pi test. So into this respective function. So let's say I wrote up here dev and my function name is value underscore input and in the bracket like this put up the colon and get down. Now right here I have to uh, put up the value regarding I have to put up that respective value which I wanted to pass up here. Okay. So now I'll be giving up two values. Okay. So yeah, let's say my value which I wanted to give up is n. Uh, no, that's one of i. Okay. So value for i is let's say I want to give it as 12. Okay. And I have one more that's j. And let's say I just wanted to give that as 10. Now, previously the example which we did saw that respective example was belonging to only one single value. Right now, here, right here, I'm trying to give up two different values. And according to those respective only, I, I just wanted to check out that how is it going to work out? Is it going to work or not work? And what are the cases? Right now, here, I'm going to return up both of those respective values. For the first one, I'm going to return up the i. And for the second one as well, I'm going to return up the uh, j. If you want, you could return both of those uh, in the one only. I would do, do that, return i, j. Fine. Great. So yeah, uh, I one second comma I comma J. Okay. Now that's pretty much sorted. I could return both of the values into one single function only. Now I'll be making up this respective function as a fixture function. So what I'll be doing, I'll be writing at the rate pi test dot uh, fixture. Okay. So this is how you make up your respective uh, function as a fixture function. Now, further, wherever you just wanted to use up these respective values, simply pass up this respective, uh, your, uh, that respective thing into the, as an argument or as a parameter. And further, you could simply use out the respective values, whatever you wanted to use out. Right. Now, um, uh, value underscore input i j one second. Yeah, that works, right? Let's get down here and I'm going to use up the function. Let's say that's diff and it's test underscore uh, test underscore add. Okay. Um, right here. And now what I'm going to do is that uh, before moving that like that, I'll be using up some common thing here. So let me use up some common thing that's test underscore um, op underscore add. Fine. So this op is the one which I'll be using up common in each of these uh, functions so that I could just use that in the uh, terminal for accessing of those test functions as so def test underscore op underscore add and to this I'm going to pass up the respective function. So that's value underscore input. Okay, my function name which we did have up here. Now I'm going to put up here the assert and it's value underscore input now into this we have two values so i don't say that i don't think that it's going to work up like this let me do out one thing i would remove it this from here and i would simply return up i at this particular place okay i will make up a new fixture function so let's say that's diff and it's value underscore n and like this and into that i have j is equal to let's say 20 or let's say that be 10 and here i'm going to return up the j like this right and above this i'm going to make that other fixture function so let's do that it's pi test dot uh, dot fixture right so this is how you make up your second fixture function as well now here i'm going to pass up both of those that's the value value underscore in function as well so value underscore input and this is the addition addition of value underscore n and that's equal equal to so 12 plus 10 is equal equal to 22 but i'm gonna write up here as 21 okay now I have to look at what did i do here that's necessary to let understand a little bit i did have two pytest dot fixture so i made up two fixture functions and into that i i one of the ones i returned the value that's uh, for the i is equal to 12 and in the second one i did g is equal to 10 and i simply returned up the values 
Now, after that, I just make meet up a test function that's def test op add, and into that I pass all both of those respective functions into which I have given up the values. Okay, I pass up both of those as a uh, as an argument as a parameter into my function. Right then, what I did have, I have this assert function. So that's for the assert. I did put a value underscore input plus value underscore in, and that's equal equal to twenty one. Fine. So this is how you could use that out very clearly, very finely. Okay. Uh, let me just get down, get above for a while. Yeah, that's good to go. Uh, right here, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna write up diff and uh, next is test underscore op underscore uh difference okay so for that again i'm gonna pass up both of those that's first one is a value input and second one is a value in okay getting down here i'm gonna put up my assert function so it's value underscore input minus value underscore in and the value for this is uh 12 minus 10 that's two so i'm gonna put it as right fine So the third and the last one, I'm gonna make it up like this: test underscore op underscore, and it's the pro. That's the product. Okay. So for this, I'm gonna put it as value underscore input comma. For this, I'm gonna put it as value underscore in. Fine. Put up the colon. Get down here. I have the assert function. That's value input uh, multiplication value underscore in, and the multiplication for this, I'm gonna write as wrong. That's the hundred. Fine. So yeah, very clearly, I just made up all of these respective things right here. Now I'm gonna go on to the terminal. Okay. Now I'm gonna run this out. So it's pytest. It's pytest dash v. Uh, that's it's dash key. Here I'm gonna put up op and it's dash v. Now let's see how that what it is actually gonna give me right here. Uh, two fields, one pass. Fine. Very clear. Now here I just showed up the command for accessing this, so it told me that in the test underscore demo for the file which into which you're writing up the things, into that one of the ones were failed, and one was passed, and the third was also well failed. So two have been failed and one have been passed, right? In total, it collected nine items because I don't I think that for the previous ones as well. I didn't commented up the things, but that's pretty fair. No, no issues in that case, right? So the failures first failure is my test underscore op underscore at. So in that my value input was twelve and value in was ten. Okay, I and she were this. So uh, we did the addition. That's twenty two and twenty two is not equal equal to twenty one. That's why this is a failure for me. And here we get up the assertion. Error. Moving down here, I have test underscore op underscore pro. So here again, I have value input that's equal to twelve. Again, value in is equal to twin. And here test op pro again, we have the same things. And to that, it was a multiplication. So one twin is not equal to hundred. So that's the reason we again got up a failure here, and that's a sort of a assertion error again for me. Okay. Getting down, I have up a very short test summary information for this respective test functions, which I did wrote up here and which I just ran it out. So test underscore op add was wrong, and because in last 22 is equal equal 21, this was was the test case has been given, and that that's completely false, right? Next, next I was having uh, that simply here. Uh, Test underscore demo for in that same file. Test underscore pro is also failed because 120 is equal equal to 100, but that's not so true. So in in this I have total two failed cases and one has been passed for me. So total two failed and one has been passed out. Right, and I I know that that you're very well aware that how to correct the ones which are uh, failed up here or which are wrong. So I'm not going to include that or write that particular thing right here. Right. So, hope you are very much clear with this particular thing that uh, how do we make up a fixture function and how we can make two different fixture functions. See here, what I did, I just try to make it a little bit, a uh, little bit complex if you feel it like. But here, I just just try to make up two fixture functions and into that respective case, what is happening that uh, in this fixture functions, I simply made that out, and after that. Uh, there, there's like uh, we just use up these fixture functions into our further test functions. Right, so hope I'm very much clear with this particular thing to you. That how do we make up the fixture functions and how are those respective things required? Right. 
So this is all for this video. Till then, thank you and take care.